Hi, this is Kim or Abbas Camber 42. Uh, just starting a brand new game. It's Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc as we finished Yakuza Like a Dragon on Saturday. So, just to get my introduction up front, since this is a brand new stream, I am Kim or Abbas Camber 42. This stream is live Mondays and Wednesdays at 8 pm GMT or Saturdays at 5 pm GMT. I stick with games start to finish, so we will be continuing with Danganronpa now right up until the end. Uh, I play all sorts of things on my channel, from Dark Souls-ish games to uh, visual novels and JRPGs, so there's something for everyone. I also have an Adverse Kemba 42 YouTube channel and Twitter. Old episodes go up on the YouTube channel, normally within 24 hours of airing here, and all my old games are on there. Uh, that includes things like Lies of P, One Piece Odyssey, Yakuza Like a Dragon, uh, Goodbye Volcano High, there really is all sorts on there. I'm also one half of Things Are Getting Strange and X-Files Rewatch podcast. You can find me and Nick wherever you get your podcasts. We post a new episode every Thursday, again 8pm GMT. Uh, we're reviewing the X-Files two episodes at a time to see how they hold up today. We're on season six at the moment and our next episode will be Arcadia and Alpha, so do check that out if you're interested. Oh, hi there, Info and Daily. How's it going? Yeah, yeah, I'm also good. Thank you. Um, hope you enjoy Danganronpa. I'll just get it loading up now. As I said, we're all starting from the beginning here, though I will admit up front, I, it's been a few years, but I have played the Danganronpa series before. Mm -hmm. Though never on the PlayStation, so let's get going. Mm, we're gonna have it Japanese language. <laughs> Difficulty, kind or mean. I was kind the middling, gentle, kind or mean. Okay, let's stick with kind then. The massive high school towers over all of the buildings in this bustling urban area. It's like the school stands at the centre of the entire world. Hope's Peak Academy. It brings in top students from every field imaginable, a government funded school of privilege. They say if you come here and manage to graduate, you'll be set for life. With hundreds of years of tradition, it sends the cream of the crop to the workforce every year. It was built to raise hope in the nation's future, which makes Hope's Peak a pretty fitting name. There are two things you need to attend this school. One, you have to already be attending high school. Two, you have to be the very best at what you do. No ordinary student could enrol here. The only way in is if you're scouted by the school itself. And standing there at the gate of the ultimate school, filled with the ultimate students, was me. まずはオーソドックスに自己紹介から始めたいと思う。僕の名前はナエギマコトだ。As you can see, I'm nothing but a hopelessly average high school student. Average on the outside, average on the inside. 
I really don't have much going for me when it comes to grades, special abilities, or even personality. I mean, yeah, I have hobbies and stuff. I like to do... Who? But it's not like I'm a psychic mutant or whatever. Like, if you asked me what my favourite song was, or my favourite movie or TV show, they'd all just be whatever's most popular at that particular moment. Even amongst the average, I'm completely average, so I can't even say I'm your everyday hero type. That's just who I am. Anyway, I figure it's always good to introduce yourself right off the bat. But you know, if I have any kind of strong point, so to speak, I'd say I'm a little more gung-ho than other people. I mean, look at me. I'm completely ordinary, but still, here I am standing in front of the anything but ordinary Hope's Peak Academy. I still can't believe I'm standing here. I wonder if someone like me can survive in a place like this. It's got this overwhelming presence, like it's trying to swallow me whole. But it's no wonder I feel that way. What you have to understand is... Well, let me just tell you about the preparation I did last night to get ready for today. Hope Peak only invites those students who are the truly elite in their field. It's such a popular topic, there are threads online dedicated to talking about the school's attendees. So to prepare, I looked up some of those threads. And I saw talk about the ultimate students, who were way beyond your average high schooler. For example, one incoming student is the ultimate pop sensation. I guess she's a high school girl who's also the lead singer for a pop group famous all over the country. There's also the ultimate baseball star. He was the cleanup hitter for the national high school champs. Pro teams already have their eyes on him. Then there's the ultimate fashionista. She's been on the cover of tons of fashion magazines. She's what every high school girl wants to be. Oh, and they mentioned the ultimate bike gang leader too. Scary thing is, he's the de facto leader of every biker gang in Japan. Gangs everywhere love this guy. On top of that, there's the ultimate martial artist, the ultimate fanfic creator, the ultimate gambler, the ultimate swimming pro, the ultimate programmer, the ultimate clairvoyant, and then some. Reading that made me realize how totally powerless I was. It was the country's finest, top to bottom. I feel like a tame little house cat who's wandered into a pride of lions. But still, there was something I couldn't stop thinking about. You see, there were a few students who I couldn't find any info on, no matter how much I looked. With all those ultimate students, I'm the only one without any kind of worthwhile talent. But then, what those other new students who didn't seem to pop up anywhere? Could they just be average students like me, without any talent or anything? The thought was kind of encouraging. I mean, I know I don't have much in the way of personality. But beyond that, there's an even bigger issue. How did such an unbelievably average student like me get picked to come to this ultimate high school? I mean, I guess there is a reason. You just have to take one glance at the acceptance letter they sent me to see why. We recently held a lottery to select one ordinary student to attend our school. As a result, you have been selected and we invite you to join us as the ultimate lucky student. They spelled it out plain as day. I got invited by pure luck. Honestly, I probably would have been better off just declining their offer. But after hearing how graduating was a guarantee for success later in life, I just couldn't say no. But then, actually standing there in front of the school, I started to feel lost, like I didn't belong there. I could feel myself losing my nerve. But still, I can't just stand here in front of the gate forever. Frozen in place, murmuring to myself, I looked down at the acceptance letter clutched in my hand. It said there'd be a meeting for all incoming students in the main hall at 8am. The meeting still isn't for a little while, but I should probably just head in. Yeah, yeah, let's do this. I gathered up all my determination and tried to act like I'd done this a million times before. And then I took my first step towards the main hall. This is 
where we're supposed to meet, right? I guess I'm the first one here. There's a really elegant clock over in the corner. It says 7.10am. The meeting doesn't start till 8 o'clock, so there's still a full 50 minutes left. It makes sense nobody else would be here yet. I was so wound up, I got here way too early. I have plenty of time before the meeting. Just standing around waiting isn't exactly... I should take a look around the school. Maybe that'll help me calm down a little. I am a student here now, so there shouldn't be any problem with me having a look around, right? It'll help me kill some time, if nothing else. Trying to play it cool, I took my first step into Hope's Peak Academy. It was also my first step towards starting a new life at a new school. At least, that's what I was hoping for. What the...? But the instant I took that first step forward, my view became warped, twisted. It was like some kind of delusion, melting away and mixing together into something else. Spinning, mixing, melting away, then spinning again. And the next moment... Everything went black. That was how it all began. And how life as I knew it came to an end. At that point, I should have realised. The reason I was brought to Hope Speak Academy wasn't because I had the ultimate good luck. It was so I could experience the ultimate despair. Okay. So, yeah, that was the introduction. Uh, uh we'll say it now. <clears throat> Sorry. Danganronpa is a super, super weird game, and you will very, very quickly see what I mean by that. I woke up with my head resting on the top of a hard wooden desk. My body feels... heavy. It's pretty normal for me to zonk off in the middle of some boring class or whatever, but... What was I doing in sleep in here just now? This isn't a classroom I've ever been in before. What the heck is going on? Welcome to Hope Speak Academy. Firstly, we'd like to explain the basic controls. You can use the left stick to adjust your aim. You aim at an object, you can interact it by pressing the X button. And presto, you'll investigate that object. Use the directional buttons or the L1 and R1 buttons to adjust your viewpoint. Why don't you try looking around the classroom? Okay. Let's just figure out how to use the menus. I might not have access to them yet. The background music's a little loud, but I'll fix it when I can. Options. I guess it's touching us to do stuff at the moment, so let's have a look around. Is that a surveillance camera? It's a dangerous world we live in. I guess they just have to keep those weirdos from wandering in. Oh. Jeez, I can't believe it's already 8 o'clock. It was just after 7 when I first got here. Has it really been almost an hour since then? That's the desk I fell asleep on. I can still see a line of drool I must have left there. I'll have to clean that up later. Hey, what's that on the desk? An orientation guide? It's some kind of cheap looking pamphlet and there's something handwritten on it. The next semester is about to start. Starting today, the school will be your entire world. What the hell? Is this someone's idea of a joke? Can look at anything else. Oh, I see. It's right stick to look around, not direction buttons. What the heck? In any normal classroom, that's where the window should be. But it looks like some kind of metal plate has been bolted over it. And if I were to knock on it... 
Yep, definitely metal. Thick too, very solid. Wait, that's not what matters here. More importantly, why are there metal plates over the windows? Okay, let's see. So what might have happened is... I got myself so wound up, I passed out in the main hall and someone carried me here? If that's true, then it must mean... This is a classroom inside Hope's Peak. But then if that's true... That just raises more questions. This is all really strange. I mean, those metal plates covering the windows? It's like a prison or something. None of this makes any sense. I should probably head on back to the main hall. It's already past the meeting time. There might be other students there now. Okay, leave classroom so I'm pressing the over so Let's make sure there's nothing else to look at first. There's a TV! The school is funded by the national government, so I guess it's not weird to have TVs in here. Something feels off. I wonder what it is. Okay. Leave the area. Yes. Jeez, this hallway's kind of weird too. It's getting stranger by the second. I honestly have no idea what's going on. Well, for now I'll just head to the main hall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, circle to run. Triangle brings up a map, that'll be useful. Triangle closes the map. Can I look at that? No. It's a normal thing. The spare hotel? I guess it's a place for people to stay overnight, but anyway, I need to get to the main hall. Okay, you are gonna railroad me. No free exploration yet. Let's go. Ooh. Are you my main hall? I wonder where this red door leads. I'm starting to feel sick standing here. Nope, you're not my main hall. Okay, let's try and use that map that all the cool kids are talking about. I think it's that gymnasium over there. Let's give that a try. Oh, okay. Shutter might be down over that place. Oh, no, 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 it's the gym. Oh, so the gym is not the main hall. In our English schools, the gym often is the hall. <laughs> not here, right. So, this looks good. This door is certainly open. By the time I got back to the main hall, everyone else was already there. Are you also the new student here? Yes, you are. Yes, today... Oh, my God, I'm going to be a new student in the world of Hope. This is 15 people. The wind is good. Did you get this one, right? Standing before me were the ultimate students that had been hand-picked by the school. I looked around at everyone who gathered there, taking in their faces one at a time. Maybe I was just imagining it, but I could swear I could feel a kind of aura coming from each of them. Um, how's it going? My name's Makoto Nagi. I'm sorry I'm late, a bunch of stuff happened, and then all of a sudden I was just... asleep. Huh? Whoa, you too? Hmm. Things just kept getting curiouser and curiouser. Mm -hmm. So strange. I declare beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is a strange situation indeed. Um, what are you talking about? I honestly have no idea what's going on right now. Eek. Just a moment. There is something else we must address. Makoto, your tardiness is unacceptable. Surely you were aware of the meeting was to start at 9am sharp? To be late on your first day is unspeakable. I must report you and you must accept your due punishment. Huh? What's the problem? It's not like he wanted to be late. He didn't have any control over it. Soda! Everyone just calm down. Listen, why don't we all go around and introduce ourselves? Huh? The hell? Now is no time for friggin' introductions. 
<laughs> Maybe, but at least it'll be good to find out who we all are before digging into our bigger problems here. I mean, how are we even supposed to talk to each other if we do not know each other's names? Uh, uh, that's a good point. Okay, so let's get the introductions out of the way, then we can move on to whatever else. Sound good? I'm still totally lost, but I think it's best to focus on getting to know each other for now. So I guess this is a good chance that I'm going to get. I already looked up everyone on that Hope Speak Academy thread online, but... I still don't really know what kind of people they actually are. Time to find out. I'll start by talking to these five over there. Okay, we can talk to students. Each conversation is important to the overall story, so keep track of how they go. Fair enough. Let's ignore them all and look at that massive vault door. Holy cow, what's with that huge metal hatch? It looks like the kind of thing you'd see in some secret military base or something. This is the same main hall I was in before, right? The store definitely wasn't here then, though. Okay, ultimate moral compass, Kiyotaka Ishimaru. So that's Kiyotaka. According to what I saw about him on that thread, he went to a famous private school and won top honors every year. He's basically a flawless honor student. He's also known for the work he's done with his community's Public Morals Committee. They say he respects rules above all else, earning him the title of Ultimate Moral Compass. Anyway, you can call me Taka. You said your name was Makoto Negi, right? <laughs> it's a good name, a strong name. You should thank your parents for giving you such an excellent name. And to keep that name from losing its value, you must devote yourself every single day. Life is worth putting an ounce of effort into it, right? Right? This guy is kind of annoying. Yeah, she wrote a novel when she was 10 that got everyone talking and launched her literary career. Then two years ago, she released So Lingers the Ocean, a love story said to be her masterpiece. The book was such a hit with women that fishermen quickly shot to the top of every hottest men pool. Despite her age, she's won countless literary prizes, and all of her books are instant bestsellers. Which is why she becomes known as the ultimate writing prodigy. What else would you call such a young and talented author? But I figured she'd be a lovey-dovey type, what with her masterpiece being a romance and all. <laughs> what? It's not polite to stare, you know. <laughs> Stop staring at me like I'm some filthy creature. Filthy creature? No, I just thought... I know what you just thought. You've just thought you've never seen such an ugly woman. You thought it was just so funny. No, that's not what I was thinking at all. Don't bother trying to lie to me. I know it's true, otherwise you... I know you can't just stand looking at me. Whatever, I don't really care, I'm used to it. Wow, talk about an inferiority complex. I was like way off about what a successful author would be like. Hi, I'm Sayaka Mezuno. I look forward to getting to know you. Okay, so Sayaka Mezuno, ultimate pop sensation. The way she moves is positively mesmerizing. And that pleasant scent, I can't quite place it. Sayaka Mezuno. When I saw her name on that thread online, frankly, I was pretty surprised. She's in a pop group famous all across the country. In fact, she's their lead singer. As the ultimate pop sensation, she's in high demand to appear on TV and in magazines everywhere. But actually, that's not the only reason I was so surprised to find out she's going to the school. I'm sure she doesn't remember, but... Well, never mind. No matter how you slice it, she's really beautiful. Almost like a doll or something. I 
I'm not a doll, you know. I'm alive. Huh? Did you hear me? Atashi. I'm psychic. Huh? <laughs> Kidding. I just have really good intuition. She's a sharp one. Ah, no. oh, hey. By any chance. Now what? Yeah, it must be. I'm sure of it. Hey, Makoto, oh, did... Jeez, you guys. How long do you plan to waste our valuable time with this ridiculous back and forth? Oh, I'm sorry, I just got carried away, I guess. Self-introductions are for introducing yourself, not for bumbling through a bunch of idle chit-chat. You're right. Sorry, Makoto. We can talk about this later. It sounds like Saika really had something she wanted to say. It's not like we'll never see each other again. Like she said, we can talk later. Leon Kuata, Ultimate Baseball Star. I recognize that name. He played for the National High School Champs as their cleanup hitter, the Ultimate Baseball Star. And that superb athletic specimen is. You? Seriously? Huh? What's wrong? It's nothing, I'm just surprised. I figured with you being Ultimate Baseball Star and all. What were you expecting? Some kind of kid with a shaved head? Shaved head? No, I was just expecting more of, you know, a sporty looking traditional baseball player type. I mean, when I found that article in a picture of you online, that's how you look then. Yeah! What? Oh man, you found a picture of me playing baseball? Seriously? I hate that picture. It's not cool. It's so not cool. Seriously, I'm like mega embarrassed right now. I didn't have a choice, okay? Shaving your head is like this part of national championship regulations. But now I refuse to cut my hair, and I'm not going to dye it back to normal either. Actually, can I be totally honest with you? I don't like baseball at all. Like, at all, I've never even gone to a single practice. He's never practiced and he was still his team star player. He's some kind of prodigy. As soon as I got accepted here, I quit baseball for good. I have my own dream for the future. A dream for the future? <laughs> my only path in life is getting into music. You can feel that star quality aura I have, right? I'm going to be a singer, so all I need is a songwriter and someone on guitar and we're set. This new version of me is chasing after my dream. It's like super cool to the max. I can't believe what I'm hearing. I never imagined I'd hear something like that from a baseball all-star. Yamada Hifumi. Sobete no hajimari ni shite owari naru mono. Katsuna no hou de yonde itadaitemo kanaimasen zo. Hey, Hifumi Yamada, ultimate fanfic creator. <laughs> By the way, how much do you know about the world of 2D art? The world of... 2D? <laughs> well, in that world, I am well known and supremely well regarded as the ultimate fanfic creator. Mm -hmm. I once sold 10,000 copies of one of my fan comics at a school festival. That event has passed into legend. <laughs> Some of them didn't get it, of course, saying I'd be tainted the event. How stupid can you be? Too bad about them, but selling 10,000 copies like that is definitely pretty remarkable. The worlds of such idiots mean nothing to me. I'm like Van Gogh, totally unappreciated in my time. I'm a soldier serving night and day to destroy all mindless preconceptions about fan fiction. I'm sure if you were to observe my work, Mr. Nagy, you'd comprehend its greatness immediately. For my work is filled with the deepest meaning. What? What kind of meaning? It's about embracing our basis urges. I don't think I want to comprehend it. Okay, next five people. Phew, phew. Go from one side to the other again. Aoi Asahina, the ultimate swimming pro. Oh yeah, Sahina. She's been breaking records in every competition she's been in since elementary school. She's even been chosen as an upcoming Olympic cadet. She is, without a doubt, the ultimate swimming pro. 
The combination of her ability, appearance, and uh, proportions has been widely discussed online. So, uh, what was your name again? Sorry, totally forgot. Makoto Nagy. <laughs> oh yeah, I knew it was something like that. No, not something like that. It is that. Sure, sure, got it. Here, I'll hammer it into my brain right now. Uh. Makoto Nagy, Makoto Nagy. She just keep repeating my name and moving her finger across her palm like she was writing something. What are you doing? Uh -huh. Oh, don't you know? If you want to remember someone's name, you've got to write it out on your hand three times. I've never heard that before in my life. Oh. Hey, by the way, how do you spell your last name? You spell it exactly like it sounds. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, I have no idea. <laughs> I'll just figure out later and write it down then. Yes. Anyway, glad to meet you. Sure, same here. Well, one thing I learned is that she's totally easygoing and bursting with energy. Sorry, I just get kind of embarrassed whenever I introduce myself like this. Anyway, I hope we can get along. Same here. Nice to meet you. Huh? Maybe it's just my imagination, but... Have we met before? Oh, I don't think so. We just met for the first time, which is why I said, nice to meet you. Go oh, yeah, good point. Sorry. You don't have to apologize for that. Oh, yeah. Chihiro Fujisaki is known for being the cutting-edge programmer she's created. She's the ultimate programmer. She's also got that timid little bunny type thing going, which endeared her to a legion of fans. Oh, no. Hey, so listen. I'm really sorry. Uh, what are you apologizing for now? Well, because you seem upset. You must be mad at me, right? Oh no, not at all. I was just lost in thought about something. Oh, lost in thought? Yeah, it had nothing to do with me being upset or anything. Oh, that's good. I was afraid that maybe you didn't like me. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm starting to understand why our fans are so into us. Cancel it around the room. Oh, anyway, I won't get distracted. Who's next? Uh, Kyoko. Um, can I ask your name? Name is Kirigiri Kyoko. Question mark. Kyoko Kirigiri. She's pretty tight lipped, huh? Oh, but you know, her name didn't show up anywhere in that Hope's Peak Academy thread. And I did see that there were students like me, ones that didn't really have any identity or presence. Could this girl be one of them? Um, so what are you doing at the school? None. What's that supposed to mean? No, I just meant getting invited here means you're some kind of ultimate something, right? So what ultimate something are you? Why should I tell you? Huh? Well, I guess you don't have to tell me. <sighs> no, I don't have to tell you. So I'm not going to. Nothing about her turned up online, so I was thinking maybe she got pink by chance like me, but... Her face is like an iron mask. If she doesn't want to tell me anything, there's no point in asking. Hey, ultimate fashionista, Junko Enoshima. Anybody would recognize this one. She's got more charm and presence than any high school girl in the country. She's the ultimate fashionista. I've seen her on tons of magazine covers, but... I feel that doesn't quite match up to reality. Huh? Huh? Oh, you're talking about my cover photos and junk? <laughs> oh, well, of course. Those are totally photoshopped. Photoshopped? 
Yeah, you know, I just tell him back with like computers and junk. Oh, so they aren't real. Come on, don't act so surprised. You're gonna make me all depressed. It's totally normal these days to photoshop the crap out of cover photos. If you're surprised by that, you'll be totally blown away by a certain dangerous old beaver of ours. <laughs> they make the eyes and jump super big and twitch the skin so it looks all ceramic and porcelain. Oh, so many dreams are getting crushed today. Ultimate fight gang leader, Mondo Oda. Mondo Oda, huh? Which means... He's the current leader of the largest biker gang in Japan. He's earned respect, even awe, from every gang in the country. He's the ultimate bike gang leader. Um... Nice to meet you too! Oh. Hell yeah. I better be careful around him. One wrong word and I could wake up at the bottom of the sea. And four more! Oh, sorry guys, but we'll learn who everyone is shortly. Ogami Sakura. Da. Sakura Ogami, the ultimate martial artist. Oh jeez, I almost asked her if she was a guy. The day I say something like that out loud is the day I get turned into a human meatball. But now I remember, she completed in martial arts tournaments in America and won despite being a girl. She's the ultimate martial artist. She's fought over 400 matches and never lost a single one. That thread also said a bit more about her. Some call her Ogre. Some even think she's the closest known relative to the primates, the famed Missing Link. Any incoming Hope Speak students who are reading this, let me warn you right now. If you value your life, avoid her at all costs. Standing in front of her now, I don't think they're exaggerating about that. Boy. Hey, you. Ah, uh, yeah? I snapped to attention without realizing it. Then she starts to poke and prod at my body. Ah, uh, what are you? Not Muscular quality and quantity is right around that of an extremely ordinary high school student. Hmm. Hmm, what a shame. You're not fit to act as my training partner. I'm not sure that's such a shame for me. Oh, I love you, Sakura. Ultimate Affluent Progeny by Akia Togami. Hi, uh, nice to meet you. That's the most half-assed introduction I've ever heard. But there isn't really anything I can do about it. Even amongst the ultimate students, this one is special. The Akio Togami. He's the heir apparent of his family's massive financial conglomerate. He's already started managing business operations and his own personal assets are, well, vast. His title of ultimate affluent progeny is completely accurate. He's the definition of exceptional. That's everything I learned about him from the Hope Speak Academy thread online. Oi. We're done with introductions, right? How much longer are you going to stand there? Go away, I'm sick of looking at you. His aura says to me, you and I will never stand on the same level, like a king in training. Ultimate Clairvoyance, Yasuhiro Hagakure. Yasuhiro Hagakure, known as Supernova in the psychic community, the trend-setting Ultimate Clairvoyance. Honestly, I don't really get that fortune-telling stuff, it's pretty much beyond me. Still, I can't help wondering if there's any truth to it. Okay, I give up. Oh, what happened? I saw it. Look right at it. Seriously, I totally saw it. Saw what? Mm. A guardian angel with a crazy perm chasing after a Bigfoot running with a skyfish in its mouth. And that guardian angel is your guardian angel. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. But hey, we should grab some brewskis sometime and get really deep into Lemuria and its civilization. What? We're not allowed to drink? We're in high school. Oh, I'm actually 21. I've been held back a few times and see, well, it's a long story. A few times? Yeah, I bet that is a long story. Oh, 
スにお目にかかりますわねセレスティア・ルーデンベルクですセレスティア・ルーデンベルクセレスティア・ルーデンベルクセレスティア・ルーデンベルクセレスティア・ルーデンベルクセレスティア・ルーデンベルクセレスティア・ルーデンベルクセレスティア・ルーデンベルクセレスティア・ルーデンベルクセレスティア・ルーデンベルクセレスティア・ルーデンベルクセレスティア・ルーデンベルクセレスティア・ルーデンベルクセレスティア・ルーデンベルク I would much rather you called me Celeste. She's polite, but pretty forceful at the same time. I don't think she wants to say more about it. I guess the rumors in that thread were right about her. The self styled Celestia Ludenberg, she's the ultimate gambler who's never lost a bet. Other than her obvious love for gothic or leaf clothes, everything about her is wrapped in a veil of lies. They say she entered and won in an underground gambling tournament, earning the title Queen of Liars. She totally cleaned out the other players, taking their life savings and laughing as she did it. <laughs> I look forward to getting to know you better. <laughs> That smile is beyond deceptive. I'd better watch myself around her. And with that, all the introductions are done.、Mm, even though they're all ultimate, they all have their own individual sort of.、Uh, something. <laughs> okay, time to get down to business. This is no time to stand around making friends like a bunch of dull eyed baboons. Oh, that's true. I think someone said something about a bigger problem or something. What was that about? Oh, not this one. Oh. Makoto, you said a bunch of stuff happened and then you were just asleep, right? Well, the same is true of all of us. What? Seriously? Just after each of us got to the main hall, we lost consciousness. And when we came to, we were somewhere in the school. That's what happened to you, right? But that's just weird. That every one of us would get knocked out like that? Exactly. That's why we're all freaking out. And that's not the only thing. You saw the windows in the classes and the hallways were, right? But instead of normal glass windows, it was a bunch of big metal plates. What's that all about? Plus, all my stuff's missing. Even my cell phone. Yeah, you're right. I haven't seen my PDA anywhere either. And then there's the main hall here. The front exit is completely blocked by some giant metal hatch. But there wasn't anything like that when I first got here. What the heck? What is going on there? Maybe you just got caught up in some kind of, you know, crime or something? What? Like a kidnapping? You think that maybe someone grabbed us and hauled us off and we're not actually at school? Mama! Come on, don't think like that. Cheer up! I bet this is just part of the school's orientation procedure. Yeah, I'm sure that's it. I'm just gonna take it easy for a bit. So oh, so you think they want us to do something to surprise us? <sighs> well, if that's all it is, it's nap time for me. I was up way too late last night, so I could use a little shut eye. I feel everyone's tension evaporating. But then it began. This is a test of the school broadcast system. Am I on? Can everyone hear me? Okay, well then. The voice seemed totally out of place. It was so playful, so completely unconcerned. I couldn't help but feel a deep, unnerving dread at the sound of it. It was like hearing someone laugh at the scene of an accident.
What the hell was that just now? Jana. Well then, if you excuse me. Tata. Hey, what? You're gonna take off? Just like that? Oh yeah, now I get it. The whole thing was just to get us pumped up for the entrance ceremony. <laughs> oh, man, thank God it was all a joke. I'd be totally freaked out if it was real. Oh, Alright, I guess I'll head out too. wonder what they got planned for us next. Damn, I was totally looking forward to that nap too. Why'd they have to go and kill the mood? Oh, wait for me, I want to go with you. If that's it, well, I will see you there then. Not that anyone cares, but I'm gonna go too. Everyone took off to the gym, but I was frozen where I stood. That uneasy feeling I'd had before, I just couldn't get it out of my mind. It looked like I wasn't the only one. <laughs> this doesn't seem right. Yeah, that announcement was totally weird. Then. Maybe, but just staying put doesn't mean we'll be safe. Besides, aren't you guys just a little bit curious to find out what's going on around here? Not of hot. If we don't move forward, we learn nothing. The only choice is to push ahead. I guess she's right. But still, I'm kind of... No, I'm really nervous. We don't have a choice. We have to go. They said go to the gym, right? Let us just save. Let's get a move on then. Enough standing around introducing people. Let's see if we've got any other menus. Nope, not yet. Okay, to the gym. Let's get this party started. God, I had no idea this Hope's Peak Academy place was going to be such a pain in my balls. It really ain't that much different to the time I just spent in Juvie. Hell, this place is even worse. <laughs> Why isn't anyone here? Walking through the halls, I didn't see a single person. Yeah, bye, yeah. Isn't that, like, seriously not good? <laughs> They're just trying to spook us. They'll take those metal plates down later, I'm sure of it. <laughs> All we can do now is hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. So now. Well, hell, ain't like I'm scared or nothing. Let's just get this over and done with. <laughs> hey, whoever called us here? Mondo, stop. No running. I shall go too. Hey, wait. Don't leave me here all alone. Okay, time for some more tutorial action. Triangle to observe the room you're in. Observing will display what people and objects can interact with. I see it gives me a little crosshair. So we got a display case. There are all kind of trophies and plaques inside. Of course, all the students who go here are ultimate, right? So this is probably just a tiny fraction of all their rewards. Put that thing in the corner by looking at it. Oh, imagining it people. Total silence. For whatever reason, she's the only one managing to stay calm. Or maybe I'm just imagining that. No, we've looked at you. Where are all the other students? Why are we the only ones here? I'm totally getting a bad vibe right now. Another surveillance camera. I feel like we're being watched every second. I don't like it. This school has a lot of TVs. They couldn't all just be for that weird school broadcast, could they? I better head to the gym. Correct. Is that the way in? Still filled with an easy dread, I did what the announcement said and went to the gym. And I saw what was waiting for us there. Oh, it really does look like an entrance ceremony. Ooh. See? Told you! It's totally normal entrance ceremony stuff. 
Hero was right. But in a way that just emphasized how completely not normal all of us were. It was the strangest thing I'd ever seen. Right before my eyes, it was. What I was seeing, it was utterly incomprehensible. Such a bright voice and carefree attitude was completely out of place. And all of that anxiety I'd been carrying with me suddenly transformed into outright fear. Ah! What, what? That teddy bear can talk? No. Calm down, I'm sure there's just a speaker inside it. Bora, bora. I already told you already, I'm not a teddy bear. I'm Monokuma, and I'm your headmaster. Ah! What? It moved? <laughs> Seriously, man, calm down or something. It's probably just a remote controlled toy or something. Oh. How dare you compare me to a child's plaything? You cut me deep, deeper than the Mariana Trench. <laughs> My remote control system is so complex that even the folks at NASA can't recreate or comprehend it. Come on. Ah, but so many say stuff that might destroy NASA's dreams. I just can bear that. No. Bear? Really? You are unfortunate. Hey, no. Now then, moving on, we really must hurry and get started. Anta. Giving up already? No other stupid bear pun? Quiet down now, quiet down! Uh, okay, so... <laughs> he has abandoned the gag. Everyone stand at attention and bow. Oh, good morning. Good morning. You don't have to say it back. Now then, let us commence with a most noteworthy and memorable entrance ceremony. First, let's talk a bit about what your school life here will be like. Now, uh, make no mistake, you few students so full of potential represent the hope of the world. And to protect such splendid hope, you will all live a communal life together, solely within the confines of this school. Everyone will live in harmony together and adhere to the rules and regulations of the school. Huh? Hey, no. And now then, regarding the end date of this communal life. There isn't one. In other words, you'll be here until the day you die. Such is the school life you've been assigned. <laughs> what the hell did you just say? Until the day we die? Ah, but fear not. We have quite an abundant budget, so you won't lack for all the common conveniences. That's the least of our worries right now. Yeah, what the hell? You're saying I have to live here forever? You're screwing with us, right? I am not screwing with you! I am no liar of that, you can be a hundred percent sure! And just for your information, you're completely cut off from the outside world. So you don't have to worry about that dirty, dirty land beyond these walls ever again. Cut off? So there's no place all over the school? So they're to keep us trapped in here? <sighs> That's exactly what they're there for. No matter how much you may yell or scream, help, help, help will not come. So with all of that in mind, feel free to live out your life here with reckless abandon. Oi, oi. Come on, what the hell is this? I don't care if it's school or whoever else is behind it. This is just a really bad joke. Yeah, cut the shit out. It ain't funny anymore. You just 
just keep saying this is a lie or a joke or a bunch of skeptics, all of you. But I guess you can't help it, huh? You grew up in an age where you're taught to doubt your neighbor. Well, you'll have plenty of time to find out whether or not what I say is true. And when that time comes, you'll see the truth with your own eyeballs. That I speak the undeniable... Oh, oh, God. That I speak the undeniable truth. So, Having to live here forever would be quite the problem. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Come on now, what's the matter with all of you? You decided of your own free will to attend Hope's Peak Academy, didn't you? And now, before that entrance ceremony is even finished, you've decided you want to leave? I know now. Ah, but you know... I guess I did forget to mention one thing. There is one way for you to leave the school. <laughs> really? As a headmaster, I've created a special clause just for those of you who'd like to leave. I call it the graduation clause. <laughs> now let me tell you about this fun little rule. As I mentioned, in order to maintain an environment of harmony here, we rely on a communal lifestyle. And if someone were to disrupt that harmony, they and they alone would be allowed to leave that school. That, my students, is the graduation clause. Nanda. What do you mean by disrupt the harmony? <laughs> well, you know, if one person was to murder another... Murder? Stabbing, strangling, bludgeoning, crushing, hacking, drowning, igniting. How you do it, don't matter. You must kill someone if you want to leave. It's as simple as that. The rest is up to you. Give it your all to achieve the best outcome in the worst way possible. A chill shot down my spine. You must kill someone if you want to leave? As soon as I heard those words, my blood went cold. I bet that got your brain juices flowing. Beats the heck out of a human catching a salmon, huh? Like I said before, you guys are the hope of the world. But, you know, taking hope and seeing it get murdered creates a darkened shadow of despair. And I just find that so darn exciting. What the hell are you talking about? To kill each other is... Huh? To kill each other is to kill each other. I'm sure there's a dictionary here somewhere if you need it. We know what it means, that's not the problem. Why do we have to kill each other? Yeah, stop blabbering and get on with all this nonsense. Just let us go home already. Blabbering? Blabbering, blabbering. What do you mean blabbering? Stop blabbering on about blabbering on. You guys just don't get it, do ya? Let us go, let us go! You just keep on saying the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over. Listen, from this moment on, this school is your home, your life, your world. Got it? Yeah. And you can kill as much as you want to kill, so go ahead. Go on a kill, kill, killing spree. <sighs> Alright, come on, how long are you going to keep up? Huh? Daddy. You got us, okay? You scared the heck out of us, so you can go ahead and reveal the trick now. Huh? Reveal the trick? So, yeah, because I mean, you know this is some kind of trick, but alright. So, like, uh. Dude, shut the head up and get out of my way. Shoving Hero aside, Mondo placed himself in front of Monokuma, his voice rumbling like thunder. <laughs> Listen up, asshole! This shit's gone way too far! What the hell kind of joke is this? I don't understand, no. Joke? What do you mean? Like, your hair? My hair. Roar! Mondo roared and then there was a sudden boom. It was the sound of the floorboards as he kicked off and launched himself into the air. He flew up Monokuma, fast and straight as a bullet. He'd locked onto his target. Yeah, 
What? No smart ass come back this time? Stop that goddamn beeping and say something. Watch out! Get rid of it! Huh? Huh? Hurry up and throw it! I don't know if a frosty stunned him into silence or what, but without a word he did as he was told. He threw Monokuma. And as soon as he did... the hell? That sure as shit wasn't a joke. It blew the hell up. There was a painful ringing in my ears and I could smell gunpowder. Explosions might happen all the time in movies or whatever, but when it's real life. I've never seen anything like it. You know, that means the teddy bear's been destroyed, right? I told you, I'm not a teddy bear. I'm Monokuma. Oh, there's another one! Son of a bitch! You seriously tried to kill me just now? Well, yeah, I was serious about trying to kill you. You did violate one of the school's regulations, after all. I'll let you off with a warning this time, but you better be careful from now on. Any naughty little boy or girl who violates my rules won't get off with just a little swat on the butt. Yeah, bye, yo. Hey, so this name is like a bunch of you around somewhere? Oh. Monokumas have been placed all throughout the school, yeah. Plus, don't forget the surveillance cameras installed everywhere. If you're caught breaking any rules, well, y'all just saw what happened right. <laughs> Next time I won't be so forgiven with my punishment. Don't let it happen again. What is the punishment? Just wrong. Yeah. Now then, to commemorate your joyous entry into our school, I have a little something for you. Yeah, yeah. This is our official student handbook. Pretty cool, huh? As you can see, it's fully digital, so naturally we call it the e-handbook. Uh, oh. Well, moving on. This handbook is absolutely vital to a healthy school life. So don't lose it. When you start it up, it'll display your name. Always make sure you have the right one. Now then, this is not your everyday notebook. It has so many more uses than that. Also, it's completely waterproof. Splash it, wash it, drown it, it'll keep on ticking. And thanks to its space age design, it can withstand an impact force of up to 10 tons. Very resistant. It contains all of our school regulations, so make sure you review them thoroughly. You'll hear me say this a lot, but any violation of the school regulations will not be tolerated. Rules restrict, yes, but they are full protect. Society, for example, would be utter chaos without laws. The same thing applies here, which is why it's crucial to have strict punishments in place for violators. Okay, well, that brings our entrance ceremony to a close. Please enjoy your abundantly dreary school life, and see ya! And with that, he was gone, leaving us all in state of shock. So, guys, how would you define what we just experienced? How? Why? I don't understand any of this. We have to live here forever or kill? No, no, no. What, what just happened? It. Everyone, we need to just calm down. First, let's take a second to summarize everything we just heard. Based on what Monokuma said, we essentially have two choices. Choice number one is we each stay here in living a communal life together until we die. The other choice is <sighs> if we want to get out of here alive, we have to kill someone, right? But killing someone, that <laughs> We were abducted out of nowhere and stuffed into this place that meant to look like a school. And now we're supposed to start killing each other? This is... <laughs> this is just... What is this? Alive, that's what it is. 
all those ridiculous things we've heard. It has to be fake. <laughs> right now, it doesn't really matter if it's real or fake. What mm. matters is, is there anyone here who's seriously considering all this? To that, nobody had a response. Keeping quiet myself, I looked around at the others. They all stared at one another, trying to gauge each other's thoughts. I could almost taste the hostility. And that's when it hit me. I realised the true terror hidden within the rules Monokuma had laid out. You must kill someone if you want to leave. Those words had planted vicious thoughts deep within each of us. Each of us became suspicious of everyone else. We were forced to wonder, is somebody going to betray us? And that was how my new school life began. The school which had come out of nowhere to raise my hopes so high. It's not a school of hope. It's a school of despair. Everyone's still alive, at least. So there's that. Right, first trophy earned from zero to hero. And yeah, sorry. Hope my uh, voice acting doesn't irritate too much. Monokuma's for, uh, fun to voice over, but plays havoc on the vocal cords, so I'm just going to be a bit croaky for a bit now. You can't do it quietly. You must kill someone if you want to leave. My mind froze and my breath caught in my throat as I thought about that. I could feel a paralyzing fear slowly making its way through my body, dominating every last nerve. The air hung heavy on me, pressing down like a weight around my neck. It took everything I had just to endure that weight. But for as heavy as the air felt, all it took to pierce it was her sharp words. Sorry. So, what are you going to do now? No. Just stand around glaring at each other? Her pointed comment was directed at everyone in the room. It helped pull us all back to reality. Right, she's right. Sometimes, even if you're nervous or afraid, you just have to step forward. <laughs> to forget such a simple fact, I can't forgive myself. I'm so ashamed. Please, someone hit me. I can't forgive myself. Someone hit me. Punish me. Huh? Jesus, if you have time to yell about it, you have time to do something about it. Perhaps, but what is the mission exactly? 
Look! Idiot. So look for a way out, duh. Nani? We totally need to find whoever was controlling that stupid bear and beat the hell out of him. D but before we do that, maybe we should take a look at the handbook. It's probably best to check out the school regulations Monokuma mentioned before doing anything else. True, if we stumble around with no clue as to the rules are, something like that might happen again. Shit. Fine then, let's hurry out and check out the stupid rules already. After turning on my e handbook, the first thing that appeared was my name. So, just like Monokuma said, the owner's name shows up front and center. Then, from the main menu that popped up, I selected the school regulations icon. An itemized list appeared on the screen. It was the school regulations. In other words, the, ru the rules being opposed on us all. Students may reside only within the school, leaving campus's unacceptable use of time. Nighttime is from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. Some areas are off limits at night, so please exercise caution. Sleeping anywhere other than the dormitory will be seen as sleeping in class and punished accordingly. With minimal restrictions, you are free to explore Hope Speak Academy at your discretion. Violence against Headmaster Monokuma is strictly prohibited, as is destruction of surveillance cameras. Anyone who kills a fellow student becomes blackened. Sorry, anyone who kills a fellow student and becomes blackened will graduate unless they are discovered. Additional school regulations may be added as necessary. Feeling a slight dizziness, I raised my face up from the screen. As I looked around, I saw the same stormy expression on everyone's faces. This is bullshit. What the hell kind of rules are these? I'm not going to let him control me! <laughs> well then, why don't you wander around the school without a care in the world and see what happens? Personally, I would love to see what happens when one breaks the rules. But if he got punished like what we saw before, I don't think there'll be a respawn waiting for him. Oh. I... Ever since I was a kid, I grew up with my older brother pounding this into my head. When a man makes a promise, he has to keep it, even if it kills him. Yeah. So what? Uh. I've made a ton of promises I start to keep. That's so what? <laughs> so I can't afford to die in here. <sighs> None of that made much sense to me. Are you saying you will follow the regulations? Is that it? So uh, well, yeah, I guess you're right. Hello. Hey, um, I have a question. For regulation number six. What do you think that means, exactly? Anyone who kills a fellow student and becomes blackened will graduate unless they are discovered. You're talking about the second harm, right? Where it says, unless they are discovered? I was wondering about that myself. <laughs> it's saying that if you want to graduate, you have to kill someone without anyone finding out it was you. <laughs> but why do we have to do that? I don't see any reason to worry about it. Just worry about following the rules that they've been explained to us. I mean, meh. Frankly, I don't want to hear anything from someone who waits for others to decide what to do for them. <laughs> don't jab at me. Yeah, yeah. More like a form stab. <sighs> well, for now, let's forget all that silly junk about murders or whatever. Yes. Now that we know the rules, let's start exploring the school. True, we need to find out exactly where we are. Is there anywhere out? What about food and supplies? There are tons of questions we need to answer. Damn straight! Alright, let's start looking around. I'll be going alone. What? Why? That's a pretty stupid idea, don't you think? Someone here might have already started thinking about murdering one of us. Are you saying we should stand around with them in our midst and make it that much easier for them? Wait a second, that would never... Nanda. Don't bother saying it couldn't happen. You can't deny the possibility. That's why you all seized it with fear when that graduation rule was made clear to you. <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> but... <laughs> so I'm simply acting in accordance with what I think is best for me. <laughs> Hold on, like hell am I going to let you run off and do whatever you want? None. Out of my way, Plankton. <laughs> 
What the fuck's that supposed to mean? Mm. One tiny bit of plankton drifting across the sea. So minuscule, so insignificant, they couldn't possibly have any influence on the boundless ocean. I'm gonna kick your ass! Stop it! We shouldn't fight! The fuck you say? You're some kind of goody-goody little bitch! Who the thing you are, talking to me like that? You think I'm my fucking dad or something? No, I wasn't... Fuck you! Wham. He punched me. And I flew back in a heap. It was like something straight out of a comic book. I didn't even see the punch coming. It was just suddenly right there in my face. One second I was standing there, the next I was soaring through the air. Now that I think about it, maybe I'd kind of forgotten. The kind of people I'd been trapped in here with. My common sense just stopped functioning. Being around all these ultimates had blown my fuses. So I guess I shouldn't be surprised that it all led to something as absurd as this. But I just lost track of sense but I just lost track of that sense of reality. That was my last thought as my consciousness started to fade. Before it finally cut out completely. And when I finally opened my eyes again, what I saw was Huh? Where am I? As if it had become part of my daily routine, I woke up in yet another room I'd never seen before. Okay, so where am I now? Okay, I now have the menu. By pressing the square button, I can open it. Cool. Okay, we have free roaming and free saving. That's good. So let's check it out. Let's so see if I can just turn down the music slightly. Slightly better. So we save and load. Presents. Oh, that must have been what that crest thing was earlier. Yeah, that's the crest. And all our stuff is about everyone, okay. Makes sense. This must be the key to the room. My name is written on the keychain, which means it must be mine, right? I better hang on to it for now. Yep, maybe sure is a genius. What else can I click on? I can't remember how to do that thing. So now I should stick around the room. There's a way, that was it. Okay, so that trash can. Just an everyday trash can. I don't see any kind of trapdoor or hidden compartments or anything. Ooh, free money. Yeah, okay. I keep forgetting which button to press. There's a piece of paper hanging on the wall which says... Announcement from Headmaster Monokuma. Each room's lock has been designed to be completely protected against tampering or lock picking. Remaking an individual room key is tra quite troublesome, so please make sure not to lose yours. Your room comes furnished with a shower, but please note that the water is turned off at the night time. Also, the bathroom in the girls' rooms includes a lock of their own. Finally, we prepared a small gift for each of you. For the girls, a sewing kit. For the boys, a tool kit. The sewing kit includes a map of the body's vital organs. One stab will do the job, girls. For the boys, we believe a strong blow to the head with any of the tools should be ample. Don't think, just feel, and let's all enjoy ourselves. I crumpled up the sheet of paper and threw it in the trash. Yeah, yeah, I'll just keep pressing the wrong button. Looks like the sort of door leads outside. It's locked. Some of the rooms have locks, huh? It's some kind of lint roller. I guess we're supposed to clean up after ourselves? 
Some kind of monitor. Uh There doesn't seem to be anything particularly strange about the bed. Oh, okay, stop doing that. Yeah, yeah. Maybe used to playing Triangle. When I last played this game, I played it on the PC, so apologies. I don't know the PlayStation controls. This would appear to be the bathroom. Huh? It's not opening. I guess it's locked. There's some kind of metal plate mounted here. Surveillance camera? I hate the idea that someone might be watching me right now. We're not allowed to mess with the cameras, so I better make sure I don't touch it. Oh, metal plate's the same. Like it. It's a notepad. I guess the school must have given one to each of us. It looks like there's something in the drawer. It's a toolkit. It must be brand new, it's still in the shrink wrap. I don't really need it right now, so I'll just leave it here. I think I'm starting to understand. This room must be... Sleeping anywhere other than the dormitory will be seen as sleeping in class and punished accordingly. This is my assigned dorm room. Someone must have carried me here after I fell unconscious. So that answers the question. The next question is... What's everyone else up to right now? There's only one way to find out, and that's to get out of here. Off we pop, then. I rushed out the room to meet up with all the others, but there was someone waiting for me there. It was like something out of an old TV show. Ah! Oh, oh. She had an embarrassed smile on her face. I stood up slowly. Are you okay, Sayaka? Are you hurt? <laughs> you make it sound worse than it is. I'm completely fine. I know how I look, but I've actually built some pretty good muscle jumping up and down on the stage. Oh, that's good then. But, are you okay? You know from when Mondo hit you? It's true, I got knocked out right there in front of everyone. I guess I revealed my lack of cool right from the beginning. Makoto? Oh, uh, I'm fine, nothing's wrong here. Oh, that's good, I was kind of worried. Oh, thanks. By the way, what are you doing here? Actually, I came to get you. You came to get me? Well, if you're really feeling better, I was hoping you could come to the dining hall. The dining hall? After you got knocked out, everyone decided to go and do their own thing. We decided it would be more effective if we split up to investigate. So we agreed to get together later on and talk about what we each found out. So does that mean it's almost time to get back together? If that's what's going on, then of course I'll go with you. Oh good, I'll go on ahead and meet you at the dining hall then. Okay, so this is the dorms, and everyone's got their face on their door. That's sufficient. A circle to run, I think. Quick look around, so this is all the corridors. What we got? Okay, not allowed to free roam, just gotta go to the dining hall. So, where's my map? It's gotta be the knife and fork. This must be the dormitory dining hall. It looks pretty clean, so that's good. Uh, I guess that's not really important right now, with us being prisoners here and all. Yeah, that's true. Nobody was there waiting for us. We don't really have much choice, so I guess we should just wait here for now. <laughs> hmm, okay, let's wait here. Huh, you heard that? Like I said, I'm psychic. 
Come on, I'm just kidding. Seriously, I just have amazing intuition. Is it really just intuition? It's kind of sudden, I know, but here comes the tutorial. Okay, reactions. You're going to be talking to Sayaka. When you're talking to her, some purple words are going to appear. Here's how they work. When a purple word shows up, you press the triangle button to go into reaction mode. At this point, you can use the directional button to make a selection of the X button to confirm it. When it comes to dialogue, you can review what you talked about to look for more information. Okay, 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 makes sense. Hello. By the way, Makoto. Ah, oh, what is it? It's well, it's just... I know this is kind of continuing the self-instruction thing, but I wanted to ask you something. Continue our self introductions. We kind of got cut off, but I had a question I wanted to ask you. Saika wants to ask me something? I wonder what it is. Now I'm really curious. Let's get back to that point. What did you want to ask me? Hmm. Makoto, did you happen to go to Blackroot Junior High? Were you maybe in class two? Yeah, actually, I was. Ah. I knew it! I went there too! I was in class four though. Do you remember me? Do I remember? Even back in middle school, she was a celebrity with all kinds of ultimates surrounding her. How could I forget? It's almost as surprising as her question was. That she remembered me. We never even talked to each other, but somehow she still knew who I was. I know. Hey, are you okay? Oh yeah, I'm just surprised is all. I wouldn't have thought that you'd remember me. <laughs> we went to the same school for three years, of course I remember. Well, that's true, but there were lots of students in our grade, right? Plus, I've never been the type of person to ever really stand out. I'm average at everything and my hobbies are just totally normal. Even normal would call me boring. Oh. What are you talking about? You're so strange. Strange, that... <laughs> she started giggling even louder. That somehow mysterious smile of hers makes my heart grow calmer. Her smile was the nicest smile I'd ever seen. <laughs> anyway, I'm really glad that I know somebody here. <laughs> Talking to you has made me feel a lot better about this. You're amazing, Makoto. Uh, no, I'm really not. I'm nothing compared to all you ultimates. <laughs> But you're the one that helped me find my courage again, not any of those ultimate students. Thank you for saying that. Whoops, wrong button. Yes. And thank you for helping me out, I'm going to become your ultimate assistant. Huh? My assistant? <laughs> yep, I'm your assistant now. I'm going to help you out as much as I can, so let's get out of here together. When she says things like that, it... It just gets me pumped up. Which is nice, but still... Everyone else is still late. Besides that, I don't even know what time it is right now. There must be a clock around here somewhere. Yeah, yeah, wrong button. Time to start looking at stuff. Um, so what time is it right now? What? Seven o'clock at night? You were unconscious for a pretty long time. I see. Without being able to look out a window, I've lost all sense of time. If I have to stay in this place for too long, I might just go crazy. Hello? I can't believe no one's here yet, but I'm sure they'll start showing up soon. It's almost like he timed it. Uh, almost like he timed it. Taka threw open the dining halls, right as Sayaka said that. Yeah. Ah, oh, Makoto, Sayaka. So you two got here first, huh? Too bad, I was sure I'd beat everyone here. I guess that just doesn't mean I haven't enough fighting spirit yet. Well, I won't give up. Next time I swear I will win, no matter what it takes. Justice shall always prevail. That's a bit much, don't you think? And soon after that, everyone else came strolling in, one after another. After a few minutes, everyone had gathered in the dining hall. Okay,
Wait, hold on a sec. What's wrong? What about, uh, what's her name? You know, the silver haired girl? Oh, yeah, Kyoko. What about her? She's not here. What? I took another look around the dining hall. Sure enough, she was nowhere to be seen. I wonder where she went. Has anyone seen her? But everyone just shut their heads. Wait, so no one's seen her? Why hasn't Kyoko shown up yet? Could it be because... Hi! Stabbing, strangling, bludgeoning, crushing, hacking, drowning, knighting. How you do it, doesn't matter. You must kill someone if you want to leave. It's as simple as that. <laughs> the rest is up to you. Give it your all to achieve the best possible outcomes in the worst way possible. Is it possible? Was she really? No, no, I'm just overthinking things. <laughs> Darn it, Kyoko. Are you really going to be late this on, like this on your first day of school? Not only is she late, she didn't tell anyone she would be late. A most unbecoming personality trait. Anta. You'd be a real jackass right now, you know that? <laughs> well, what do you want me to do? Punctuality is everything. <laughs> now then, I declare the first session of the Hoax Peak Academy briefing meetings has begun. It's... Makoto, actually, first of all, I've talked enough. Maybe we should listen to what everyone else has to say. Okay, let's do that. Ah, you know... What's up? I feel like I really have become your personal assistant. Don't you agree? I may not be the best assistant in the world, but I'll give it everything I've got. No, you've already done so much as my assistant. Okay, time to chat to everyone, I guess. Let's start over there and work our way across so we don't miss anyone. Oh, I can't select everyone. Okay, who's gonna actually talk? Oh, it's just Sayaka. Okay, since you're in the dark about this, let me lay out what's been going on. Everyone split up to investigate different parts of the building, but... Byakuya and Taka each went up on their own, so did Kyoko. It looks like Leon, Hiro, Yonko and Chihiro all grouped together. The same goes for Hina, Sakura and Mondo. Celeste, Toko and Hifumi were left over, so they joined up. Okay, let's talk to everyone individually. So, Byakuya first. I wanted to try and find some clue as to who's responsible for imprisoning us here. But unfortunately, I've made no such discoveries. That's all from me. Really? That's it? If I'd uncovered anything, naturally I'd have more to say, but I didn't, so I don't. R right. Understood. La la la. I spent some time looking around the dormitory and... There I made the discovery of the century. I found there was exactly one room for each person. Oh well, yeah, I figured that out before anything else. Each door already has the nameplate on it, so I guessed all the rooms have been assigned already. <laughs> And each room key was attached to a keychain with the owner's name, Prasidja, etched onto it. Which confirms the room I was in earlier is, in fact, my room. And Chiro and I found out that all the rooms are totally soundproof. Your next door neighbours could scream their lungs out and you wouldn't hear a thing. Well, each room has a private bathroom which could also lock. But it looks like there are only locks in the bathrooms in the girls' dorms. Huh? But when I checked my bathroom door before, it definitely seemed like it was locked. That's weird, I should double check that later. Aye, aye. Okay, so they got a bunch of rooms ready for us. They're assuming we're going to be here a while. Well, better than have than to have not. At least we don't have to worry about surviving like wild animals. <sighs> that can't be all you have to report, can it, Mr. Honor Student? Eek. That's all for my report. Let's move on to whoever's next. Well, he was fucking useless. We went up and down the school, double checking the windows and all the hallways and classes. We wanted to see if we could get any of those metal plates to come off. And what happened was... Nothing, not a damn thing. We couldn't get a single one to budge even a little bit. 
there isn't any hope of escape anywhere. The school really has been totally cut off. This sucks. It really, really sucks, 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 sucks. What the hell are we going to do? God damn, calm down. You're starting to make me nervous. We thought maybe we could find some way to communicate with the outside, so we went looking all over. But we didn't find a thing. Sorry. I went back to the main hall thinking maybe we could do something about that giant hunk of metal. But even with Sakura and me, uh, both, it wouldn't budge. We did it with desks, chairs, nothing. It was as hard as light. Metal? Well, yes, it is metal. Anyway, we're, if we're gonna get out of here, it's not gonna be through there. I feel like I could just cry, but I have to hold it in. I have to manage my hydration. Shall I tell you what happened next? It has nothing to do with communicating with the outside world, but it's still worth worrying about. In both the school and dorm areas, there was a set of stairs leading up to another floor. But there were gates there, and we couldn't find any way of opening them, so we couldn't check it out. <laughs> In other words, the point is the only uh, bag. In other words, at this point, we are only able to search the first floor. Sorry. We can further assume there is potentially something above the second floor as well. And if that's the case, there is at least chance it may lead to a way out. I know this. One more to go. If I am being honest, I can't quite say we acted as one. Rather, we did nothing as one. We spent the entire time in the gym. Honestly, we are not exactly the types to go running around to school like a gaggle of junior detectives. Huh? What the hell are we thinking? Just sitting around the gym the whole time? Well, it's not like any of you invited me along. No one said, hey, come with us. I blame you for leaving me out. It's all your fault. If you want to go with someone, then you should have just said something. <laughs> oh, forget it. Like I want to go anywhere with a dirty slut like you. Slut? <laughs> your mind is as thin as your body. You make me sick to my stomach. I don't even know how to react. How can you say something so awful to someone you just met? Mama. All right, guys. Everyone just calm down, okay? This stress is bad for your skin, you know? <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you two are close now. You're fighting like sisters. I don't think that's what's going on, Sayaka. Ano? So that's what they have to say, huh? And I guess I'm the only one left. I went and had a look around the dining hall. I found a fridge in the back of the kitchen. It was overflowing with all kinds of stuff. I guess we don't have to worry about food at least. Sure, for now, but even with all of that, there are at least 15 of us. How long can the food last? <laughs> you can just eat sesame seeds or something. Uh, what am I, a parakeet? <laughs> I don't think we have to worry about it. All the food gets restocked automatically each day. At least that's what Monokuma said. Uh, Saw him? Yeah. yeah, he came out of nowhere while I was checking the fridge, told me that and disappeared again. He was so fast, I can't believe that someone could have been moving him around with a remote control. So that, uh... A weaponized toy that can just appear from nowhere. I can't tell if they're supposed to be afraid or not. But was everything okay? He didn't, like, try to eat you or anything? Eat her? Uh, what do you mean like that? When you say eat, what kind of eating are we talking about? Oh, come on, man! What the hell, fatty? You're acting like some kind of sleazy drunk dude. Did you say... Not like there's a good kind of drunk dude. Hey, stop screwing around, all of you. Are you still asleep or something? We're prisoners here. We could all die at any second. So She's right. We can't be making stupid jokes right now. We got to do something or... A voice cut through the noise, interrupting Mondo. You're all spending a lot of time just yelling and carrying on. <sighs> oh, it wasn't Monokuma. Apologies. Sorry, Kyoko. Do you really think you can afford to do so? Have none of you accepted the reality of the situation? <laughs> Kyoko, where have you been? We already started the meeting without you. She didn't say a word. Instead, she just dropped a piece of paper on the table. Huh? What's this? 
It appears to be a map of Hope's Peak Academy. A map? What the? Where did you find this? Sir. It doesn't matter where I found it. It does matter? You're really freaking us out right now. Never mean that. What does it mean? Just look at it. The building we're in right now is laid out precisely in the same way as Hope's Peak Academy. So what you're saying is, this really is Hope's Peak Academy? Well, in terms of its construction, yes. But it looks like it has a number of strange renovations done to it. Renovations? I don't know all the details yet. All I found was the details on the first floor. But then, is this really Hope's Peak? We didn't get kidnapped and taken to some other place? So stupid, it's not even possible. This is where the country's future elite is supposed to come and learn? But if it really is Hope's Peak, where are the other students? <sighs> hey, come on, guys. Let's just stop talking about this, you know, negative stuff. Why are you worried? Things don't Ooh. look good. Worried? What's there to be worried about? I mean, this was all planned out, right? The people in charge of Hope's Peak put this all together, right? <laughs> Man. If I got stressed every time something like this happened, I'd have ectoplasm shooting out my mouth. Daddy. The things come to those who wait, right? So we just gotta chill and everything will work itself out. Ha ha ha. Why are you laughing? That's so funny. <laughs> I'm just happy is all. It seemed that splitting up and investigating was a good idea after all. <sighs> Haven't you been listening? Looking around was a total waste of time. We didn't find a way out. Didn't find who was behind this. We still have no idea what's going on. Huh? Oh? It's not crystal clear to you what's going on. It's perfectly obvious we have been imprisoned in some secret location with no way out. None of us had any response to that. We didn't want to accept the reality, but it was staring us right in the face. <laughs> you didn't have to go and say that. I was trying not to think about it. No way out. We're trapped here. What are we supposed to do? <laughs> it's very simple. If you want to leave, you just have to kill. <laughs> Don't even joke about it. <laughs> Everyone, just calm down, please. We need to stop and think about what to do from here. <laughs> There's got to be something we can do. <laughs> All we can do is adapt. Adapt to living our lives here from now on. <laughs> we'll live here? Are you saying we should just accept it? <laughs> The lack of adaptability is the lack of survivability. Survival is not based on who is strongest or smartest. It comes down to who can adapt. As someone who has come out on top more than once, I have a suggestion. Uh, what do you mean? Hmm. You can all understand that we are trapped here, which means we'll be spending the night. However, you all remember the rule regarding nighttime, right? Nighttime is from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. Some areas are off limits at night, so please exercise caution. Sleeping anywhere other than the dormitory will be seen as sleeping in casts and punished accordingly. Yeah. So, regarding this night time, I think we have to add a rule of our own. What do you mean? <laughs> Going out at night time should be prohibited altogether. The school regulations do not actually tell us not to go out at night. I would like to make it official. Huh? Why? The way things are now, every time night comes, we will all start to get worried and anxious. We will be afraid that someone might try and kill us all. What? <laughs> if we have to worry about that night after night for who knows how long, it will wear us down in no time. So you're suggesting we limit our activity as night as some kind of preventative measure? <laughs> However, unlike the other rules, nobody can be forced to comply. We all have to agree to follow it. <laughs> I see what you mean, but I think I can agree to that. It's like the Gothel leader said, without something like that, we're just going to self-destruct. On behalf of all the men here, I agree to comply. Huh? You can't just decide to speak to all of us. <laughs> so everyone is in agreement? Good. <laughs> then if you will excuse me. Huh? Wait, where are you going? <laughs> it's almost night time. I want to take a shower before it arrives. <laughs> so goodbye. Moving with pure elegance, Celeste left the dining hall. Her behaviour seemed so natural, I couldn't imagine anyone trying to stop her. Mm. Oh. So, I guess it's pretty obvious where we go from here. We'll be spending the night, it looks like. <laughs> Adaptability. Eh? Oh. So, Mr Chairman, what's next? One person already left. Mm. Uh, 
Well then, what I say is we call an end to today's meeting. Like she said, it's almost night time anyway. We can reconvene first thing tomorrow morning. Do we really have to stay the night here? We don't have a choice. We can't go that long without getting some sleep. So we just have to give up. That's fine and good for today, but what do we do tomorrow? Yeah, buddy. Our only option is to split up and look round again and let everyone know if we find anything. Uh. Yeah, okay, let's do that. Uh. Then we're done for today. Good, I'm exhausted. With heavy movements, everyone headed off to their private rooms. Uh. Makoto, are you ready to call it today? Yeah, let's go. Is this really where I'll be staying for the foreseeable future? Oh, that's right, I should check the bathroom one more time before I go to bed. Only the girls' bathrooms should have locks on them, right? Alright, let's open it up. It's no use, it really is locked. Buzz! Wrong! Not locked! Holy crap! Jeez, talk about an overreaction! It's like you just saw a ghost or something. Like some kind of robot bear ghost? What are you doing here? Makoto Nagi, this is super duper majorly bad. So bad it's almost magical. Ultra magical, awful, awful attack. In point of fact, I acknowledge that the bathroom in your room has a problem with its door frame. So wait, the reason it won't open is because it's locked? The jaw just doesn't fit? I know, hey! Didn't you see the notice? What? Can't you read? The bathrooms in the boys' rooms don't have locks! <laughs> I mean, a lock in a boys' bathroom is kind of pointless, don't you think? <laughs> well, it's not like it's that pointless, I get, but I'm no expert on the birds and the bees and all that. Anyway, there's a little trick to opening this particular ill-fitting door. And that's why I'm here to teach you. Okay, ready? So you just gotta turn the doorknob and then lift up while you pull. Aye. Go ahead, give it a try. Turn the knob and lift the door up while I pull. When I did that, the door opened without a problem. <laughs> See, it opened right up. Isn't that crazy though? Dodo's the only one that don't fit quite right. You're supposed to be the ultimate lucky student, right? It looks like you're not lucky at all. Anyway, I don't feel like being here anymore. Bye bye! Hey, wait! Damn it. Looks like it's night time. We all promised we wouldn't leave our rooms now. All I can do now is try and get some sleep. While still mumbling to myself, I collapsed onto the bed. My eyes closed almost immediately. It's not that I was ready for bed exactly, I was just utterly exhausted. It was as if I'd spent an entire day staring at a TV watching movies, or like some kind of illusion where I'd been tossed into a made-up fantasy world. Yeah, that feels about right. There's no easy way just to accept the situation we've been suddenly dropped into. So this is how the curtain closed on my first day at Hope's Peak Academy. Soon enough, I was asleep. Would it be too much to hope that when I woke up, I realised it was all a dream? It's kind of lame as far as endings go, but I'd be fine with that. Actually, it'd be the best. In any normal school, Mr. Monokuma would come become a kind teacher, but when I think about what's coming up, I'm just so full of pride and joy. Our ceremony earlier today was absolutely splendid. Thank you all very much. 
Remember that you're all students of Hope Speak Academy and strive to refine your ideals. Apparently it's morning, but thanks to the total lack of windows, there's no way to know for sure. Anyway, what should I do now? Maybe I should go and find Sayaka and we can figure out where to go from here together. She did say she's my assistant now. Okay, it's decided. I'll head for her room. With a newfound determination, I left my room. Yeah. Good morning, Makoto. Good morning. <laughs> yes, morning greetings are quite a delight. Such an energizing way to start the day. <laughs> now then, let's make sure we both do our very best throughout the day. Sure. I wonder if he's always like this. Side, sure. There's a door down next to the door. I guess I should use that. Hello? Good morning, Sayaka. Oh, Makoto. Perfect timing. Listen, I have a favor to ask. A favor? I was just getting ready to head out. If it's okay, would you like to come with me? Maybe we could talk. Yeah, sure. Where are you headed? Um, I've been thinking there may be something around here I could use for self-defense. Self-defense? Well, I mean, whoever's keeping us here could show up and attack at any time. You never know. Whoever trapped us here. Whoever presented us with the rules for murdering each other. Whoever put us in the same position. She's right. We never know when they might attack. So I just want to be able to protect myself, no matter what happens. A weapon to protect herself. Well, now that I think about it, that display case in the gym entryway had a bunch of stuff. Maybe... <laughs> oh, the gym! Okay, let's go. Again? <laughs> like I said, I'm psychic. <laughs> Come on, I'm just kidding. Seriously, I have amazing intuition. Am I really so easy to predict? Anyway, we should head to the gym. Okay, we can fast travel now. Good to know. Weird and random. Okay, so let's try let's figure out how we teleport. Ah, so I think the map from there by looking at the So where's the gym? Get on this map. Try that again. Oops. Can I change floors? Oh yeah, I can change floors, okay. So we're going to the gym. Okay, she was looking for an item of self-defense, so that big sword over there is catching my eye. Try that. Oh, we can look at all sorts of stuff. Oh, I'll have a look at that. What kind of stuff are the shelves up above? Not that interesting. Helmet of some sort? Why is something like that on display? Another one of those coins. I'm going to have to keep looking at things for them then. A plaque. I guess it's to commemorate some kind of championship. Gold statue of Buddha. Why is something like that on display? Some terracotta clay figures. They don't look like the kind of things you put in a high school gym. And the obvious sword. Is this a sword? 
Oh no, I think it's just a replica. Still, it's pretty impressive. It's completely covered in a gold coating. But, jeez, I barely touched it and I got that gold stuff all over my hands. Wow, you're right, your hands are totally gold. Even just for self-defense, I think it's a little... Well, it's still better than nothing, I guess. You should take it with you, it might help widen up your room a little. I think so? I guess you better be careful taking it back. You should wrap it in newspaper or something. And just like that, it's been decided. Mm. I don't think anything I can really use for self-defense. Hey, don't worry about it. It's not like you'll need it right away, right? Plus, if anything were to happen, when the time comes, I'll protect you. You'll protect me? <laughs> Thank you for saying that. I've got you on my side. I guess I don't need a weapon after all. Psycho giggled as she said that. That mysterious smile. I can tell it comes from the heart. It makes me feel at ease. When I look at her, I honestly feel like I can do anything. <laughs> okay, we can stop looking for a weapon then. But as long as we're here, let's hang out a little bit more. Um, I know I said I wanted to talk to you, but now that we're here, I really don't know what to talk about. And I was the one who invited you to come with me, too. Sorry. It's okay. I mean, if there's nothing to talk about, then we can just not talk, right? Huh? You don't have to force yourself to talk. We can just, I don't know, stare off into space or whatever. <sighs> stare off into space. Oh, but you're probably super bored just standing around doing nothing. <laughs> No, it's not that it's boring, it's just... I've never really done it before, so I don't have a lot of time just to do nothing. I guess that makes sense. You're not a normal high school student like me. You've got tons of stuff to do every day. Hey, uh... This is kind of out of nowhere, but... Makoto, do you have a dream? <laughs> well, what about you, Sayaka? What's your dream? I'd love to hear. My dream is... I've always wanted to be a star for as long as I can remember. I grew up without a mother, you know. And my dad worked really late every night. I was always home alone. I was just a kid, you know, so I was really lonely. But that all changed when I saw a pop star on TV for the first time. She was so pretty, like a princess, and she could sing and dance. <laughs> but more than anything else, there was her smile. Looking into her smile, I could feel my loneliness melting away. I decided that's what I wanted to be someday. I wanted to give that kind of encouragement to others. <laughs> Eventually, that became my dream. That's so amazing, though. You were actually able to fulfill your lifelong dream. Honestly, it's really incredible. But does he? I did whatever it took to reach that dream. I mean it, even some things that weren't so pleasant. Huh? I know this, ne? I honestly believe that as long as you keep chasing your dreams, someday they had to come true. But to do that, you can't take your eyes off your dream, not even for a second. Even if sometimes it's a bad dream, whether you're awake, whether you're asleep. To make your dream a reality, you have to keep your gaze fixed on it no matter what. In that world, if you lose your focus, even for a split second, you'll get left behind. You have to keep on swimming against the current, without even taking time to breathe. That's the kind of world my dream lives in. Is it really that tough? It's not fun at all? Oh no, don't get the wrong idea. It is super fun. But that's exactly what scares me. Huh? I enjoy every single day I wake up and get to do what I want to do. Everyone in our group is amazing. We're rivals in a way, but it all means so much to me. We've been performing together since we were young, so they're like family to me. Without them, I would have given up on my dream a long time ago. To work together and fulfill our dreams together has brought me so much happiness. Okay. But that's the thing that scares me the most. If the world gets tired of us, then what happens? What happens to us? Then the dream dies, those wonderful days come to an end and everyone goes their separate ways. Sayaka. She's trembling. She must be terrified. She worked so hard, sacrificed so much to get where she is. She must be terrified of losing it. So that's the reason I decided to come to Hope's Peak. Huh? What do you mean? 
Well, they say that if you graduate from here, success is basically guaranteed. Which means I could keep on performing with my best friends forever and ever. At least that's what I thought. I really did believe that, but... Now we're trapped in here with no way out. They're probably waiting for me. While I'm in here, the world is forgetting about me. Minute by minute, we're all disappearing. But still... Sayaka! I can't afford to be stuck in here! That was the first time I heard her cry out from deep within herself. She sounds... desperate. But I can understand why she'd feel that way. Trapped here this way, the dream she put so much uh, effort into is on the verge of disappearing forever. And that isn't something that can be fixed with just a few kind words. The weight she's carrying, I can't even imagine it. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to complain. I kind of killed the mood, huh? No, not at all. I'm really sorry. Uh, Sayaka? Actually, are you hungry? Before we head back, why don't we go to the dining hall and get some food? So... Yes. You want to make us something to eat? Oh, sorry. You want me to make us something to eat? I might not look like it, but I'm actually a pretty good cook. Well, really? What's your speciality? Chili oil. You mean the condiment? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. She burst out laughing. Her earlier mood disappeared, replaced by the bright smile I'd quickly grown used to. But how'd it happen so fast? It was almost like a mask, like some kind of neutral expression. Anyway, we headed to the dining hall to get something to eat, before returning to our rooms. The only thing in my room is a fake sword covered in gold. All it does is make me feel that much more uncomfortable. Anyway, there's still plenty of time left in the day. I really don't feel like just sitting here. Maybe I'll take a look around. Free time. Yeah, let's hear about it. As you live out your school life, you will be given a free time at certain points. During free time, you can spend time with your fellow castmates to deepen your friendships. You also give them presents, which can potentially give them a better impression of you. You can get these presents from the Mono Mono machine in the school store. Come by early and often. At certain points you will witness intimate events and new info will be added to each person's report card. These events can also open up new skills which will prove useful as everything plays out. We strongly encourage you to develop and deepen as many friendships as you can. Also keep in mind when you talk to a classmate time will pass. When you're finished you will automatically return to your room. After a certain amount of time passes free time will come to an end and the story will progress. If you prefer not to engage your free time you can always choose to simply go to sleep to stop it. We wouldn't recommend this approach, but if you absolutely must press forward with the story, then... Anyway, why don't you try it out by spending some free time with Sayaka Maizono? She's the ideal partner to begin with, don't you think? So I guess we've got to go and find Sayaka. Not that one. That one. Where is she? Is she in her room? Can't teleport to. You have to walk out the door and find her. Oh, no, this you know, Makoto, I'm so anxious. I really am afraid. Should I talk to him for a while? Actually, first, let's talk about going to the Monokuma store. We passed that earlier, I think. Where it was, it was with, by the Welcome to Despair sign. This is it, right. It's just around the corner from here. It's that door that was boarded up earlier. Let's go and play. Aww, a cute little shop. See what we get. We got. I'm not sure. 
So I tell you what they actually are. Yes, for an item, at least we've got some in our bag. Do you want to get my lap? Come, good girl, sit down so we can play. There we go, good kitty. Right. Spend some time with Sayaka. Are you going to try and cheer me up? Sorry to make you take time out of your day like this. I did my best to comfort Sayaka. Sorry, her and I grew a little closer today. Would you like to give her a present? Yeah, let's give it a go. What do you want to give her? What would she like? Let's try and figure it out. What's that? School press? Ancient certificates? Sacred tree sprig? Ray gun? It's like a little ring. That might be the best thing. Red scarf. The love status ring. Let's try that one. <laughs> to receive something so wonderful makes me happy, but... <laughs> to get it from you, Makoto, I can't even begin to describe this feeling. Seeing Saika so pleased with something I gave her makes me happy. Oh, no. Uh, Makoto, do you think you could make time for just the two of us to talk? What's wrong? Why are you being so formal? Well, it's just, I guess that was kind of formal, but it's just because I know I can count on you. Huh? <laughs> Having you by my side really makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> if you weren't here with me, I just don't know what I'd do. I'd be lost. <laughs> I hate that we had to meet again under such awful circumstances, but I'm relieved you're with me. Sayaka... Standing here face to face and hearing her say that, it's nice but kind of embarrassing at the same time. I know you feel you being here is what saved me. <sighs> really? Oh, thank you for the flattery. That smile, that mysterious smile that softens my heart. I really wasn't flattering her, that smile saved me. <sighs> it's kind of strange, you know. I never thought I'd get the chance to really talk to you like this. Through middle school, you never talked to me. In fact, you never even looked at me. It's because you were like a celebrity. I couldn't just go around staring at you. Wait, how do you know I never looked at you? I know. Because I looked at you all the time. Huh? I was always looking for an opportunity to talk to you. You wanted to talk to me? But since I always had so many people around me, I, we ended up graduating without saying a word. That was one of my biggest regrets. 
Not by me. Uh, no. Do you remember during our first year of junior high, that huge board, uh, bird wandered into the school pond? Actually, now that I think about it, I sort of do remember something like that. <sighs> it was like out of a fairy tale. The turtle once every millions of years, that bird once every thousand. A huge bird wandered into the school pond during our first year of junior high. I think it might have been a... A crane, a sparrow, or a heaven. That's not going to be a giant sparrow. Let's try heron. Heron's a big. It was a heron, wasn't it? No, not quite. It was similar, but even bigger than that. Like a heron, but bigger, then it would have to be a... I think it might have been a crane, then. It was a crane. It just walked right into the pond. That's right. That's what it was. It was so big, the teacher had no idea what to do. But you led it into the forest behind the school. You helped it find its way out. Only because I was already in charge of taking care of the animals at the school, they made me do it. I should have said thank you then, but it's okay. If I do it now, thank me. I'm that crane, you see. I've come to return the flavor. Here, let me make you a cloak. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, I kind of figured. Honestly, though, I was so impressed. That's why I always wanted to talk to you, even just once. I never imagined this would be how I got my chance. Yeah, if we meet again at a train station somewhere downtown, it will make for a nice dramatic reunion. But instead, it's this weird dr school. But maybe still. I'm sure you'll help me find my way out, just like that crane. You'll save me. It's just intuition, I know, but I still believe it. I'm gonna save her? I'll do my best, I promise that. I'll make sure it's just more than just intuition. If there's anything I can do, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I believe in you. Besides, my intuition always turns out to be right. Because I'm psychic. <laughs> <laughs> kidding, kidding. She laughed out loud as she said it. The closer we get, the stronger that smile of hers makes me. I was glad to feel that way. New skill. Melodious voice. Did we get any more free time or was that it? Today's already come to an end, but I swear tomorrow I'm going to find some kind of clue. I swear. Sorry, cat's headbutting the microphone. As my eyelids began to slide closed, the conversation I had with Sayaka that morning began to replay. In a way, it's almost frustrating. Even if I understand where her desperation is coming from, I can't share it. The pressure she's under is way different from anything a normal high schooler like me goes through. She didn't just stumble into the school the way I did. So I can't say I feel things the way she does. Compared to her? No, compared to everyone else here. There's no doubt I just don't match up. I guess that might explain my own frustration. Okay, so I'm sure that you've noticed the killing game has begun, but there's still a little room for laughter. It seems our new students are already filled with despair, still have some hope of escape. <laughs> so when will it begin? When will their hope begin to die? Is it time yet? Is it time? Heart pounding excitement!
じゃあ、まはりきっていきましょう。Morning has come. What should I do today?、Oh, it's free time. There don't seem to be any people on the chat at the moment, but does anyone have any suggestions if you are there about who you want me to speak to? Is there any classmate that kind of takes your fancy that you would like me to spend a little more time to? Oh, Info says the really buff one.、Uh, I guess you mean Sakura. Sakura is amazing. Yes, Info says yep, they definitely mean Sakura. Okay, let's go see.、Uh, she's over in the dormitory somewhere. She should be around this area by the look of it. Let's try and find her. At least she should be recognisable from a distance. Oh, there she is. Oh. Did you need something? Should I talk to Sakura for a while? Not up. I just got done exercising. Now would be a good time for a break. Would you like to get something to drink and talk for a bit? Sakura and I sat down for tea and a calm, relaxing conversation. Sakura and I grew a little closer today. Would you like to give her a present? Yes, definitely. I don't have anything sporty though. Already given away my love surplus ring. I imagine there'd be sporty gifts for Sakura. The ray gun's going to be a taku, I'm sure. The sacred tree sounds like it should be for clairvoyant. Let's give it the school crest. Oh, it's a key item. <laughs> I'm not allowed to give away my school quest. Fair enough. Let's see then. I can make go the ancient tour tickets. I'm not sure who would actually want that. Oh, well, that's got to be ultimate clairvoyant looking at it. Sacred tree, why not? You're giving this to me? I see, that's very nice of you. Does that mean she liked it? My post training break is the most relaxing time of my day. The sensation of your muscles cooling down after heating up during a workout is the only true reward. No matter how many times I experience it, I never get tired of it. Do you exercise every morning, Sakura? Unless there are errands I absolutely can't get out of, yes, I always do my training. If I don't, I feel restless for the rest of the day. But I'm amazed you can do it every single day. Doesn't it get tough? I can't say I've ever seen it as tough. It's also I can get stronger after all. I have to keep getting on stronger because my destiny is to fight. Your destiny is to fight? From the day I was born, I've been fighting. Heaven sent me to live as its champion. That's one heck of a legend. My father was my master, and my every waking moment was spent with him learning to fight. As a child, I sparred with boxing champions and hit the mat with wrestling gold medalists. I was no match for them when I first began, of course, but before long, they were no match for me. You mean you actually started beating people like that? I say my speciality is a solid stand up that transitions into grappling and a strong ground game. Essentially, it's a complete approach. Anything else just wouldn't make sense. You can only become the best by reaching the top of each discipline, then fusing them all together. Stand up fighting, grappling, and a strong ground game that can only be. I have really no idea. Mixed martial arts, maybe? You're basically a mixed martial arts fighter, right? So, Dana. That's right. It's the most effective real world fighting style, which is why I chose it. I don't want to just be the best in competitions, I want to be the strongest human on earth. I won't bet against you, that's for sure. 
Are you already the best? Ugh. Not yet. There's still someone I have to surpass. Really? <laughs> Until I can beat him, I will never become the strongest. You mean there's someone out there stronger than you? Maybe I'll tell you about it another time, if the opportunity presents itself. Sakura didn't make a sound as she left. Honestly, I can't believe there's someone out there stronger than Sakura. Even if they're real, can they really be human? Oh, did we get a new ability? Yay, more skill points. Okay. Sorry about this, I'm just looking for the wire because my control is about to go dead. Bear with me one second. Should have plugged it in before I started. There we go. Oh, no new ability. Back to our room. Oh, we've got more free time. Okay, does anyone have a suggestion of who else you want me to go and speak to? It can be Sakura again, or we can go and speak to another member of the party. I am happy to oblige with whatever people want to see. The white-haired girl. Which one's the white-haired girl? Is that Sakura? Oh, do you mean Kyoko, the kind of pinky-haired girl? Ultimate question mark. Let's see if I can find her. Yep. Yep, if I want Kyoko, so we'll try that. Where is she? Oh, she's in her room. Right, let's find her room. That's Kikumi's. Sakura stalking us over there. Leon. Sakura. Aoi. Celeste. It's going to be the absolute last one. I know it. Toko. Yunko. Sayaka. Byakuya. Makoto. Mondo. <laughs> Where on earth is she? Kyoko. There she is. Did you need something from me? Shall we talk to her? Yes. I suppose a change of pace is necessary sometimes. Even. Fine then, why don't we take a little break? I spent some time with Kyoko doing nothing in particular. We grew a little closer. Should we give her a present? Sure. Does she want to go to Ancient Mew? Scarf. Scarf's nice. This is something you don't see too often. Do you mind if I keep it? I'd like to take a closer look at it. Does that mean she liked it? Are you scared, Makoto? No. Huh? Being trapped in a place like this? Who wouldn't be? Of course I'm scared, being trapped in this insane school. So. Oh, that's good. That's good? So. Fear is proof that your imagination is functioning. Frankly, I feel bad for anyone who can't feel fear. <sighs> Without imagination, you can never deduce which action to take next. But what about you? You seem totally calm. You don't act afraid at all. <laughs> I'm scared too, of course. I simply hide my emotions. There's no advantage to be gained from letting others see how you feel. You hide, huh? <laughs> what I mean is, I'm not as foolishly open as you are. Foolishly open? <laughs> Also, the fear I experience is a little different from yours, I imagine. Oh, huh? What do you mean? You're afraid of what you might lose, right? But what I'm afraid of is what I've already lost. I'm sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> I know. She didn't bother answering any further. She just turned and... Goodbye. With that, she was gone. Well, we're still just getting to know each other. Maybe we'll talk more next time. I don't think I understand her at all yet. Once we're all done, I headed back to my room for a little while. Eh, 
そうです。午後十時になりました。ただいまより夜時間になります。まもなく食堂はドアをロックされますので立ち入り禁止となります。ではではいい夢を。おやすみなさい。The third day here has already come to an end. When will I, no, we, when are we going to get out of here? I laid on my bed and stared blankly at the ceiling, and before I knew it, I'd fallen into an uneasy sleep. I need an immediate, fast acting pick me up. If it doesn't act now, it's the same as giving in to regret. What do you think guides the world? Speed, of course. That's why Formula One drivers are so popular. Any idiot can accomplish something if they take it slow. Even a human piece of excrement could create a masterpiece if they spent their entire life on it. Someone who does things in a timely fashion is both wise and admirable. Straight is better than a curve or an angle. Freestyle is better than the backstroke or the breaststroke. Drive-through is better than sit-down. A Sunday comic artist is smarter than a graphic novelist. What I'm saying is, speed is the gold standard of standard world. Meanwhile, 0.0002 seconds later. I woke up to the irritating sound of Monokuma's voice. I slowly pulled myself out of bed. Another night of restless sleep. Day after day, I can feel the fatigue piling up. As soon as the thought had crossed my mind, the sound of the doorbell forced its way into my room. Yeah. A fantastic morning, isn't it? Taka?、Mm. Now then, if you'll pardon the interruption. Without waiting for a reply, Taka barged into my room. What's up, Taka? <laughs> no matter how intensely the stormy seas may batter me, I will not fall as long as my feet are firmly planted. You agree, right? I'm not sure I understand. <laughs> If you can't do it alone, just find someone to support you and you can support them back. That's how you overcome any storm. I was thinking about it last night and I decided we all need to really come together. And that's when I realized every morning from now on, in the morning announcement, every,、uh, after the morning announcement, everyone should have breakfast together. And now, the beginning of that fateful day, please head to the dining hall at your earliest convenience. That's all for now. I have to let everyone else know the good news. Taka didn't even wait for a reply. He turned and left before I could say a thing. Well, I guess I better head to the dining hall. I'm gonna teleport to the dining hall. I guess we'll painstakingly walk to the dining hall then. Just there, but still. <laughs> Good morning, Team Askito. She can make even a basic reading feel eloquent. I guess that's the power of celebrity. Is everything okay? Oh, yeah, good morning, Sayaka. Let's go really talk to me. Let's bother Kiyotaka. Okay, looks like everyone's here. So then, let's begin our very first breakfast meeting. Everyone, thank you for making time in your busy schedules to come together. I don't make time for shit. You dragged me here. 
I know I already mentioned this earlier, but... In order to get out of here, it's essential we all cooperate with each other. And the first step in this breakfast meeting is to allow us to become friends and build trust. From now on, let's all meet here in the dining room every morning after the morning announcement. Now then, let's eat. <laughs> you want me to eat breakfast with other people? I've never done that before, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's been a while for me too. Well, anyway, did anyone happen to come up with any clues? Silence echoed throughout the dining hall. Seriously? Nothing at all? Anything it could be about how to get out or who's doing this? Nobody has anything? You're all gonna die. Huh? If you can't stop yourself from showing weakness in front of others, you will die. What the hell? Don't even freaking joke about that. I'm not joking. Adaptability is survivability, did I not say so? So you better hurry up and adapt to your new life here. Have you gone completely insane? Adapt to my new life here? Do you have any idea what you're saying? Yeah, it sounds like the girl who wants to live here, and hell, more power to her. But shit. No way in hell am I living here. I'm getting out of here and I don't give a shit. <laughs> Oh, sure, feel free. Uh, okay, so nobody has any clues. One thing I can tell you is who's behind all this. Someone is totally weird and messed up. Why else would we be trapped here in the first place? Well, sure, it could be something like that. But for right now, the actual clues are... Um, oh, what's up? If you think in terms of people who are really abnormal and bizarre... I think that maybe the responsible responsible of this could be a certain murderous fiend? A murderous fiend? Chihiro, do you have some idea who might be behind this? Um, well, I mean, maybe I can't really be certain, but... Certainly it's not a concern right now. I'll allow whatever remarks you may have. Okay, well... Have you guys ever heard of Genocide Jack? You mean that serial killer who's been on the news and all over the internet? <laughs> The monstrous villain who's murdered scores of victims in a brutally bizarre fashion. The word bloodlust was left at every murder scene written in the victim's own blood. Whoever it is, he's like a ghost. He strikes without warning and disappears without a trace. On the internet, they started calling him Genocide Jack. That about covers it, I think. They say he's claimed over a thousand victims. That's just an urban legend though, right? I mean, like 10 people would be totally insane. Anyway, whoever Genocide Jack really is, he's obviously some kind of super crazy killer. Huh? And if he really is this ultimate psycho, I won't be surprised if he put together something like this. But like I said, I can't be certain. I don't have any evidence or anything. It's just a thought. But if they're the killer, isn't that like the killer of a problem for all of us? Ah, it's okay. Everything is absolutely positively, 100%, without a doubt, going to be okay. Because help's going to be here soon, I'm sure of it. No. Help? No. We've been stuck here a few days already, right? Nobody's been able to contact us, so I'm sure they're getting worried. I bet they called the police already. <laughs> the police? You're putting your face in the police? What you doing here? You guys seriously? Do you understand what role the police exist to fill? All they're good for is being a foil, playing against a villain or an anti-hero or evil organization. The bad guys come along and destroy them and that just shows how badass they really are. Are you sure you want to rely on such a reliable group of losers? I mean, come on. If you really want to get out of here, all you gotta do is kill! <laughs> Why the hell are you laughing? Daddy. I'm just impressed at the total commitment to this whole act. Anta. You're still going on about that? Ridiculous. So, Mr. Serial Killer for Psycho Freak Bastard, the hell you want? Huh? Mr. Serial Killer Psycho Freak Bastard, huh? That's a pretty long name. German, maybe? Oi, oi. We know who you really are. Aww. Maybe if I ignore him, he'll just go away. Oi. 
Hey, hey don't yeah. ignore me, asshole. Hey, no. Okay, okay. Let's get back to business. Your life here has already begun, and a couple of days have gone by, and nobody's killing anybody. Trouble. I thought all you kids were lazy and selfish, and here you are working together, but I'm totally bored. There's nothing you can say to make us start killing each... Oh, that's not Monokuma. <laughs> Sorry. Got into a bit. There's nothing you can say that can make us start killing each other. Wait, I think... Yes! Ding, 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 ding! I figured it out! All the mystery ingredients are here. Right people, right place. So why hasn't anyone killed anyone yet? That's what I couldn't understand. But I realized there was just one very important piece missing. What are you... If you want to know, I'll tell you. It's motive. <laughs> it's so simple. I just have to give everyone a motive. Motive? What the fuck are you talking about? Ah, oh, by the way, there's something I want to show you guys. Stop changing the goddamn subject. I have a little video I'd like you all to see. Oh, but don't worry. It's not some pervy adult video or anything. Seriously, it's nothing like that. It's a special video for each of you showing what's going on outside the school. Outside the school? What are you talking about? Muddy, muddy. <laughs> oh, Master's so impatient today. Why don't you just watch it to find out? Hey, Here in the school, there's a specific place you can go that has everything you need to watch on video. Good, then we can go watch the video right now. But before we do that, I'd like to know. What are you and why would you do something like this? What do you want from us? Mm -hmm. What do I want from you? Well, if you must know... If you want to know more than that, you'll have to figure it out for yourself. Do whatever you need to uncover the mystery hidden within this school. I won't try to stop you. Just to be honest, it's entertaining as heck watching you guys search so desperately for answers. So I guess I want amusement from you, too. He's gone. And once again, he left before we could find out anything useful. Really? I think we learned something very useful. He has no intention of standing in our way, uh, in our pursuit of truth. Perhaps. But what about the video he mentioned? I'm very curious to see what's on it. So Same here. Okay, so... Mondo started glancing around the dining hall. But when his gaze landed on me, he stopped. Uh. Hey, Makoto, check this out for us, would you? Huh? Why uh. me? Because you're closest to the door. That's the rule, right? Rule? Oi, oi. Hey, hey. Hey, 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 hey. 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 See how passionately I'm begging you? What's the big deal? Just check it out real quick. Okay, I guess I'll get going then. Awesome, thanks. I owe you one. If Makoto is going, I'm going with him. It's not safe to walk around this place alone. Oh. Yeah, sure thing. Then we're counting on the both of you. If anything happens, just yell and I'll come a-running. Can't say if Mondo is totally dependable or completely terrible. Yeah, I'd have to say he's kind of both. He's not exactly a bad person, but I definitely can't say he's a good person either. I'm sorry, I'm getting surrounded by cats now. My uh, Monokuma voice is upsetting people, I think. I'm just being treated with suspicion. <sighs> so, where's the specific place Monokuma mentioned? It must be somewhere you can watch DVDs, but... This place set up to watch DVDs, then. I think it's map time. Okay, so it's not over here. Let's try through that door. Oh, how about the giant tape on my map over there? That's not the bear door, it is... This one, I believe. Oh, 
Oh, something inside this cardboard box. It's a bunch of DVDs. And each one has a label on it with someone's name. This must be the video for each of us, he mentioned. I better go tell everyone. She just ran off. I didn't follow after her, I just stood right there where I was. The DVD in front of me had robbed me of all awareness. I was rooted in place. I think I see something. What else we got in this room? Okay. I sorted through the DVDs, I found the box and found the one with my name on it. Then I slid it into the expensive looking player. I sat down and stared intently at the darkened screen, and then... <gasps> I yelled out without realising it and my heart started racing. Because what I saw on that monitor was my family. Makoto <laughs> If it ended there, it would have been fine. A message of love and support. After leaving my family behind to attend Hope's Peak, it would have given me hope. Given me strength. If this was a normal school, I would have been happy, if a little embarrassed. With my family's support to rely on, I would have been motivated to do even better. But here, now, it was totally different. I wasn't living an ordinary school life. So I had a pretty strong feeling that the video wasn't going to end there. I hated having that feeling, but it turned out I was absolutely right. This time, I couldn't even make a sound. My voice just died. Where'd everyone go? It looks like a war zone or something. As if in reply, a voice came floating out of the speakers. I recognised the voice, of course. It was him. What is this? What happened to everyone? I started trembling. I could feel the fear and anger building inside me like hot magma. God damn it! I slammed my fist against the desk over and over. A single force was racing through my mind. What else? How could I think about anything else? I have to get out of here. I have to get out right now. I need to make sure everyone's safe. Makoto? Hello? What happened? Make sure who's safe. I noticed everyone standing around the entrance to the AV room. They stared at me, faces full of confusion. Yeah. What's going on? Without a word, I pointed to the cardboard box. Is that what Monokuma was talking about? What's on them? They all gathered around the box and each of them grabbed the DVD with their name on it. One by one, they each rushed to a monitor. It didn't take long for them to react. The fuck? This can't be real, right? It has to be fake, right? Yeah, no way it's real. No way. I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. Let me out of here. As soon as I saw the reactions, I knew. They'd all seen something like what I'd seen. Nobody even bothered trying to hide their fear and confusion. Except for her. Even now, she was totally calm. I see. So, this is what she meant by motive. He wants to fuel our desire to leave, so we're more likely to start killing each other. So this one. It's the classic prisoner's dilemma. Huh? Hmm. Let me use an example. Imagine two countries who are on the brink of war. Both countries want peace, and each commits to scaling back their forces as a sign of good faith. 
but there's a chance that one country may betray the other, so each country fears lowering their guard. The result is that neither scales back their forces and they both end up betraying each other. In other words, fear of invisible treachery becomes the greatest enemy of stability. <laughs> that kind of sounds like us right now. Everyone says they'll work together, but in our hearts we're afraid someone might betray us. Don't put those awful thoughts in our head. That's exactly what they want us to do. You can say that, but maybe you're thinking Justice wants everyone drops their guard so you can just... What? Boy. This is exactly what Monokuma or whoever's behind this wants. They want us to fight, don't you see? Yeah, you're right. We need to all calm down. Okay then, maybe we should start all by just talking. Maybe we'll talk about what we saw. That'll help get everything out of our system. Eh? Besides, I think we're all super curious, right? I wonder what was on everyone's videos. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't curious. Hey, Sayaka. What was in your video, Sayaka? What's wrong? Just hurry up and tell us. Sayaka? I gently placed my hand on her shoulder. Stop it! She pushed my hand away and suddenly ran off. Sayaka? Yamero. Let her go. I can't do that. I have to go and make sure she's okay. <laughs> I hate romantic comedies like this. I don't care what happens to her personally. Huh? That's because you're totally thoughtless. Nah. I'm really worried. <laughs> then why don't you go and do whatever you think you have to do? We don't all have to stick around together, right? Speaking of which, I have my own things to take care of. Goodbye. Everyone went their separate ways, but I don't have time to worry about them right now. I have to go find Sayaka. Quick look at other people, actually. I don't think anyone saw anything interesting. Ah! Hey, Makoto, these videos are some kind of hoax, right? Right? I want to think so too, but... What the hell, man? <laughs> it's all a big lie. It has to be. Ugh. I haven't got anything to say. What was in your video, Sakura? My family. But I'm not upset by what I saw. If you're overpowered, you must accept your death. That is the way of my family. But still, I refuse to believe they would lose so easily. How? What was in your video, Hifumi? Before you go asking somebody else, it's only polite to say what you saw first, don't you think? Well, I... Why are you covering your ears? If I don't hear yours, then I don't have to say mine. It's the art of hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. I don't think that's how it works. What was in your video, Taka? I saw... Sorry, it's going to take me some time to figure out how to put it into words. Everyone's really upset. I mean, how could anyone be calm right now? Why? How could something like this even exist? I just don't understand. I don't. To be able to do something like that, is it because they really are the murderous fiend? I don't think anyone's going to give me anything, are they? What was in your video, Kyoko? Sir. Why should I tell you? Yeah, we give up. Go after Sayaka. Where could she have gone? She can't have gone far. I'll check around the school. I'm mm -hmm. using my handy map. Mm -hmm. How is she? Absolutely nowhere to be found. Okay, with stuff and wonder. Oh, there's no, that's how we... Oh, I didn't see anyone in the big open door room over there. Let's try that. Oh, it's Leon. Did I miss her on the map?
Okay, before we sign out, so we're going to have to keep opening doors for a finder, I guess. Take over here. Oh, there she is. I found her in one corner of an empty classroom. She was sitting in a chair, hands on her knees, staring absently at the floor. She looked like maybe she was upset or angry or... No. She didn't have any expression at all. There was nothing on her face you could call emotion. It was as if her original mask had been stripped away. Sayaka? Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm fine. Actually, no. How could I possibly be fine? What do we do to end up like this? Why are they doing such terrible things to us? I want out! Let me out of here, right now! Sayaka, calm down. As she thrashed around, I grabbed her by the shoulders. I understand, I know how you feel right now, when I think what might have happened to my family. But now more than ever, we have to stay calm. This is exactly what they want. They want us to lose our composure and stop thinking rationally. Think about it, those videos have to be fake. Because if those things really had happened, people out there would be in uproar. Our families, the police, everyone. Right? So let's just calm down, okay? Otherwise we've already lost. I knew I was trying to convince myself just as much as her. I kept repeating those words to myself to clear away the images that had been burnt into my brain. Be calm, okay? Just be calm. As long as we work together, I'm sure we can find some way out of here. And help even may come before that. <laughs> but first, there isn't a way out. What if help never comes? If that happens, then I'll get you out of here myself, no matter what it takes. When I said that, I paused. I had no idea what had come over me. Please, please. 
Her voice was small and shaky. <laughs> Finally, she raised her face up from my chest. She looked at me with those big, wet eyes of hers. Can I... can I believe what you said? Huh? That you'll help me get out? No matter what it takes? Absolutely. Makoto, you're the only one I can trust, so please... No matter what happens, please always be there for me. I need you at my side. Huh? Of course I'll be there for you. No matter what, I'm always on your side. I mean, you are my assistant after all. Thank you, Makoto. Hearing you say that, I feel like I can keep going. I can get through this as long as you're here with me. Like you said, I'm your assistant. The smile I come to know so well returned to her face. It felt a little forced, but still, it was a huge improvement over how she was before. It's standing up! Makoto, it's standing up! What's standing up? Do you even have to ask? Your flagpole! Get the hell out of here. No, 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 I want to join in. Damn it, well, if you won't leave, then tell us what the hell is up with those videos. Oh, it's about to come out. It's going to come out, my pristine, pure, white stuffing. My honest, innocent stuffing is about to come gushing out. I balled up my fist, took aim, and swung it as hard as I could. I'd never put so much energy into a single motion before in my life. I leaned back, channeling all my power and let go with everything I had. <sighs> Are you okay? Aww. If I hadn't avoided your punch, you would have just violated school regulations. Oh, no. But boy, are you slow, 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 slow! Okay. I could have downed a thousand dollar full course dinner in the time it took you to finish your swing. Oh. Your speed, agility, alertness, passion, boldness, sense of despair, antagonization, it's all lacking. Oh, no. What the heck was that just now? He just wanted to mess with us. Oh. Well, for now, do you just want to head back? Yeah. Monokuma had come along swiftly and destroyed the good mood we created. Sayuk and I headed back to the dorms. You should get some rest, Sayaka. You still look pretty shaken. I'm sorry for making you worry about me. You're right, I'm just going to lay down for a bit. With a nod and a small bow, she disappeared into her room. Now on my own, I headed off to tell everyone that Sayaka was okay. Once that was done, I decided to go back to my room. It was hard to think after watching that deranged video. I needed some rest of my own. Jeez. Seriously, what's going on here? There's just so many problems. I can't even decide what the biggest problem is. That we're trapped in here? That what we saw in the video might be real? Monokuma? What? the mastermind has in store for all of us? Or are we our biggest problem? I want to get out of here. But I could never kill someone. Do all the others feel the same? Yeah, that's definitely the biggest problem right now. Huh? When I opened my eyes, they darted immediately to the clock. It's almost 10 o'clock. I fell asleep without even realizing it. Nighttime's about to start. So how come someone's here? Right. Okay. Uh, we didn't manage to get to any murders today, unfortunately, but certainly I can assure you they are on the cards for next time. I think that's probably a good stopping place for now. We've got through most of the introduction of Danganronpa, and you've got a feel at least for what it's all about. So hopefully... Um, things will get off to a kind of explosive start next time. Literally, figuratively, you'll have to wait to see what I mean. 
So anyway, that's it for today. I am Kim or Ever's Camber 42, a purveyor of fine Japanese RPG feeds at the moment, and a lovable little old Monokuma impersonation, which I am going to keep up until it drives you all to utter, utter despair. If you want to keep up with the stream live, it will be Mondays and Wednesdays at 8pm GMT and Saturdays at 5pm GMT here on Twitch TV. I also have a YouTube channel in the name of Adverse Camera 42 where old episodes are uploaded, usually within 24 hours of the airing here, just in case you want to look back over anything and catch up on any episodes or past streams that you've missed. There is also an Adverse Camber 42 Twitter if you want to catch me between these streams with any feedback or recommendations for the future. I'm also one half of Things Are Getting Strange in X-Files Rewatch podcast. You can catch me and Nick every Thursday, roughly at 8pm GMT, wherever you get your podcasts. We're reviewing the X-Files two episodes at a time. We're currently on season six, and Thursday's episode will be the episodes Arcadia and Alpha, if you want to check that out. So that's all from me for now. Uh, We will leave Makoto here, with you all wondering of just who's knocking on his door at this time of night. I'll be back on Wednesday to continue this playthrough of Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. Hope you have a great rest of the week.